Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast in part 25 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. Hearing news about a mysterious race against the Hells with the leadership of Squad 77 on the line, the team investigates Beatrix and learns why this race is happening, and how it involves Chertovir's Pact with the Gulfs. All right, well, good morning or afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're at. How's it going? Pretty good. Nice to be here again. We're doing awesome. All right. Uh, I guess to introduce, I, I made a haiku because of Jose's uh, inspiration in the in our chat. Uh, in Darthur City, Cassius returned to hell. Now you must race demons. Yeah. So after returning to Darthur City uh, to claim Cassius's body, the squad learned about a foot race against the Gulfs. With the leadership of Jericho on the line, Squad 77 opted to head to Beatrix in one day early to investigate where the race will take place. And that's kind of where we're at. After the destruction of Midian, After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Uh, I need you guys to make a charisma saving throw with advantage. Whoever's got the highest charisma can do that. That's usually Musette or or Ralph. Okay, so yeah, plus seven. So what if Bentley you? did it, it would be minus one. That. <laughs> Everybody likes him, but he's not super charismatic. Sheet. Oh no. There's my kind, sheet. He's got kind Easy of an agree, okay, abrasive Okay, save and throw voice. charisma. Mine's plus seven. You both got yeah, plus oh, seven. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and you roll it twice and take the highest number because it's at, with advantage because every other people are helping you concentrate. Okay, I got 27. Oh, yeah. You just so, had to beat a, you had to beat a 10. 15, so 27. Yeah, 27. You guys definitely made it through the weird sort of mauve and pink uh, lightning storm world of the Innovo, and you made it through into the uh, the consulate at, uh, in Beatrix. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Coaxial Tasco is there to, to meet you. If I hook him into my TV, will I get <laughs> signal? Yeah, that's where the name comes from. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> th there, there he is. He looks sort of like Gandalf. Looks sort he of looks like, like you, Rain. <laughs> He looks like uh, the guy from uh, The Walking Dead, season two. Yeah, I remember that. Herschel. Herschel. He looks like Herschel. Uh, I yeah, like his jacket. Nice, nice configuration. <laughs> and I like All his right. hair. So Coaxial so Tasco welcomes you. He says, "He says, hey, uh, welcome here. Um, so I, 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 I appreciate you guys coming, but why, why are you here a day early? The race isn't until tomorrow. That's how fast we are. We need okay, to well, stretch. <laughs> I, I think they'll have your room ready at the Beatrix Inn. If you want, I can walk you over to, to the inn. Yeah. Let's, Mind let's, if we run? Yes, thank you. Uh, let's do that so we well. can uh, change gear and stuff. Uh, yeah, well, if you, you can run if you want to, but I won't be, so I don't know where you're going to go. <laughs> so Rebel he... 
he leads you out the door of the consulate, which is kind of a, a rock and log building, and, and that's kind of the prevailing theme in uh, in Beatrix. Everything, most everything is made out of locks, rocks and logs. And uh, so he, he leads you down the road, um, and after about 20 minutes, you get to the Beatrix Inn, and it is a large rock and log structure. It's two stories, uh, and he, he, he brings you to the uh, manager. Uh, her name is... Uh, bonafide render and she looks like bentley uh she's got kind of the furry chewbacca looking face and uh she she says welcome welcome what's your name please and bentley says bentley widget just oh oh bentley it's good to see you again he says yeah yeah it's been a long time and uh so they, she she signs she says uh and and what are the names of the of the rest of our guests Sure. Sure, Dovir from his order Rex. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay, and she writes that down. Mm, Don't see am, many uh, of you uh, these days. That's right. Uh, I am Ralph of the Nightbreed, though I don't know anything about Nightbreed. Oh, uh, so um, what what dominion are you from, Ralph? I, to I I live on Earth. Earth is a place. Wherever that is, Bentley. Where's Earth from? <laughs> Churdovir is holding up a five. Five. <laughs> Fifth I can Dominion. count two. Fifth I Dominion. Thank you. Okay. And she looks at Richard. Uh, are, you're, are you also from the Fifth Dominion? I am. My name is Richard Smitty. I'm from, uh, I'm from the Fifth. Got it. Richard Smitty from the Fifth Dominion. Okay. And she looks at Lori. Uh, I mean, at, at Anastasia. Anastasia. I'm Anastasia Mason from New Orleans, and it's its own dimension. <laughs> I'm right. only familiar with the five. <laughs> My priestesses would have a fit if I didn't say that. Sorry. <laughs> so what dominion are you from? I don't think Anastasia's ever been educated on that necessarily because she's been raised by Egyptian well, er priestesses. Earth is, Earth is the fifth dominion. I, I guess well, I would be five then. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, and Musette? And she looks at Musette. They wouldn't understand anything about the fugue. Okay, so it still counts, even though yeah. it's technically yeah. not. Yeah. Because it's on the same plane of existence. Right. Technically in a different yeah. pocket. Okay. Fit. Okay. And what's your name? I'm Musette. Musette. Ah. Thank you. Musette, do you have a last name? Aya. Musette Aya. Got it. A-I-A. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Got it. All right. I didn't know you had a last name. <laughs> yeah. That's one. That's actually one of the families in, in Weave World. Yep. Word. For a moment, I thought you were saying, uh, yeah, I have a first name. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I spelled it. I was right. like, that might be helpful. She says, well, you are, she, she leads you over to the second room on the right. And she says, you're in room four, uh, or no, I'm sorry. It's the first room on the right. She says, you're in room four. Uh, please feel free to put your stuff down, put your feet up. We got, we, uh, when we got the call from Bentley, we set it up a little early for you. Normally check-in is until three o'clock and it's like 11 o'clock right now. Thank you so much for your hospitality. No problem. If you need me, I'll be in. Uh, I'll be in one of the rooms. I'm in room nine upstairs. We don't really have an office here, but you, you just knock on my door if you need anything. All right. Thank you. Okay. So you're in uh, room four, and there are six rooms on the main floor, and then another six upstairs. Are we all in the same room? Yes. Got to be a big room. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's got only got four beds, though, so you guys are going to have to figure out who has to sleep on the floor. Ralph's sleeping on the floor. Bentley says, I actually have a family home here. I don't need to stay in this, so you don't need to worry about me. And I stay at your place, Bentley? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take a couch, and I'll put my stuff down and start uh, putting my uh, um, picking what gear I'm going to go with, and uh, wondering, 
you know, I, I, I don't think I've ever been to Beatrix, so I don't know exactly where to start uh, investigating, but I think we should probably think about where are we going to go. So well, where do you guys want to... What do you guys want to Ralph throws do? his uh, coat on the floor in the corner, goes in a, walks in a circle on it, and then curls up in a ball till you decide what you want to do. Uh, what time is it now, Bentley? Yeah, it's about okay. 11 o'clock. Yeah, they okay. let us check in a little early. Normally, they don't let them check in until 3. Yeah. So we're here early. I think we should use this time to our advantage to kind of maybe gather some supplies or stake out the entire situation, find out where these folks uh, that we're supposed to be killing in this race, find out where they're making their entry from, kind of, you know, that Sounds like gather. a good idea. Maybe I should go to room nine and talk to uh, Bonafide and see where, if she can give us directions on where the, the whole race is going to be. And uh, what do you guys think? We probably should see if there's a map of the course because the course itself may be treacherous besides yeah. the enemies. Right. I think we're starting from the foot of the mountain and we're going, we're coming back down to Beatrix. I guess this is where the finish line is going to be. So yeah, let me go up and... Uh, See if I can knock on her door and see if she can give us information about that. I would okay. like to go get lunch if anyone wants to go with me and then kind of maybe listen in on people's gossip, whatever's going on there. All right. Sure. I'll go upstairs and you guys can go do that. I'm going to see if yeah, I can I'll talk to, town to, to Bonafide and see what I can find about the, uh, the map and where we're going to go. So I guess I'm going to go upstairs. Okay. Make sure make sure you bring something back that's juicy, whether it's food or gossip. Okay. So I'm going to knock on the door for Bonafide. Hey, Bonafide, are you there? Uh, yeah, she opens the door. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'll be like, uh, hey. What, so what can I do for you, Shirtovir? Yes, thank you. So I was wondering, uh, we're here to participate in that race. Uh, that's going to be from the foot of Mount Chukalailau. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know more information about what's going to be the um, how do we get there uh, oh, yeah. who's organizing well, it and whatever you can give me about that I, I figured as much everyone that's staying here today is is going, going to be in the race there's okay. something weird going on with the with uh, number six room but six anyway, yeah but anyway you, okay. so you, you wanted to know where the where the race is yeah, do you have a map of the the layout of the race? Where can I get that? Oh, it, it's really just a straight shot downhill. Uh, the road that leads up into the mountains, uh, the, the starting point is up there. Okay. Any areas of the road that we might need to be aware of? Just it's, a straight shot? It's a straight shot, mostly downhill. Uh, mm. You want to be careful not to run too fast so you don't get out of control. Right, right. Don't want to roll my way down the hill. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what, what, what did you mean by uh, some strange stuff outside room six? Has there been like some noise or altercations or anything like that? Well, the man, the man who checked in is really strange, and uh, also the door seems to be frozen. Oh, like you guys couldn't open the door to do housekeeping? Well, I don't want to try. He's in there, so. Right, right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, all right. I guess we got all sorts of weird people at the race today, huh? Weird is a relative term, I suppose. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the whole place is full except for number 12 hasn't checked in yet. Okay. Uh, but that's normal. I mean, I think that, you know, check-in time is 3 o'clock, so maybe they'll be here by then. And the race is tomorrow. Okay. So yeah. what direction should I go for that road that goes up the hill? Oh, you just take Main Street, uh, and you just uh, you just head. head gotcha. To Main Street and go up up yeah. the hill. Okay, northwest. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll go tell my friends, and um, and we'll get ready. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Closing the door. Go downstairs. Okay. Yeah. As as you head back to your room, uh, you see someone you recognize standing outside of your door. Uh, Riley Masters. She was the investigator. She she's uh, one of the she's the represents the Fifth Dominion in Jericho. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I'll be like, uh, 
Hi, Riley. Are you here as well? Are you participating in the race today? I haven't decided yet. I'm I'm registered, but I may I may or may not run the race. I wanted to talk with you about it. Uh, oh. do, do you have a minute? Or is your group here all together? We are. Uh, we're in the room. Do you want to talk to all of us? Uh, it wouldn't hurt, but I'll, you know, if, if, uh, why right. are some of, you said you, but you're all here. That's right. So what, what's okay. the situation? Yeah. Can I, can I come in and talk to all of you in private? Of course. Open the door. Okay. Go in the, hey okay. guys, uh, Riley Masters. Remember that from Zordorex. All right. Uh, all right. Hey. Hey, Riley. Uh, just wanted to kind of run by some things. I know this was this race thing was sort of sprung on you last minute, and uh, and I wanted to make sure. No offense to Bentley, but I wanted to make sure that you got all the information about you know what this is and why. Right. Uh, so there's a history to this race. Uh, it's normally run every 100 years, and we're not due for another one for 60 more years. Uh, it's been 40 years since the last one, but uh, they decided, the Gulfs decided to make a special case for this because there's some question about the leadership of your particular squad and these people from these creatures from the Gulfs believe that they would do a better job leading your squad against the threat to all of the planes, which is this Apex Amendios heart why they got to tread on us they don't know us they think they do well why can't they just help us instead of like just trying to replace us sounds like they want to boss us around they i think they Off really to create do their want own to squad. boss you around hmm. so no. or replace you i'm not sure i don't why? know what the what they're going to do why are we letting the gulfs decide the leadership of squads of the squad i mean what do they have to do with us the place us we're here on our own free will Where is they, from. i read through their contract and it was put together by someone named butterfield i read okay. the i read the original contract uh for, from hundreds of years ago and it seems to me there is a some kind of an emergency clause in case there was some kind of a threat to the gulfs and the um and people on earth were okay. in charge of of trying to take care of it so i thought our primary responsibility was to protect earth from the gulfs so you want to put the Gulfs in charge of Jericho's squad? I absolutely squad? don't. I don't. I'm not at all. That's why right. you're here. Okay. Okay. There, there's so... also there's also something about your Chertovir, your um, this this uh, creature that you made a pact with. Mm -hmm. There's yep. something about that that's particular. I mean, just from speaking really briefly to uh, this Butterfield. There's something about that, some kind of uh, rivalry, or I'm not exactly sure what it is. Rivalry with who? Uh, I think between Butterfield and the creature that you're pacted with. Oh, okay. And so this Butterfield, uh, what do we know about him? Uh, he's from the Gulfs. I don't, I, he's really old. I don't know anything else other than that. So he was there when Jericho Squad was created. He was already representing the Gulfs on that. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, okay. So he's pretty old, huh? Looks like he's pretty influential. And so, from what I understand, you're saying that it's important for our squad to have the right leadership, according to the Gulfs, to stop the threat that's coming. Yes. They, okay. on the surface, they say it's because they don't have any confidence in your group. But I think there's something else. I think there's something else driving it. Uh, something probably more political or more petty. I know that uh, I've, I've gotten into a lot of hot water because of the the pact that I did with the Gulfs. But mm. it was a pact that was, you know, we were in a tight situation. <laughs> so we didn't really have much of a choice uh, to get out of that situation that we were in in Africa in the Fifth Dominion. So I remember. I've, 
I, I tried as much as I could to not have to deal with them too much and get whatever promises I did out of the way. So I think we were, I was able to do that. Um, as you can see, I paid a little bit of a price for that because I got antenna now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I want to show you that I'm here to protect Earth from whatever wants to harm it. And questions later. Yeah. If if the gulfs. So, is this going to be a race to find out which one of us should 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 lead the uh, Jericho Squad? I think if one of you wins, you can do with that whatever you want. Uh, but I think the important thing is that one of their faction doesn't win the race. Okay, so here's something interesting that I heard from the innkeeper. She said that there's something wrong with room number six. That there's oh someone. My, yeah, holy crap. You should go check that out. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to go in there, but uh, I, that's, I think that's probably Butterfield's room. Oh, well, that that would explain some things. Let's see if we can find out more without having to actually uh, uh, disturb him or, or let him know that we're that we're doing that. So let me gather up with the rest of the people here and see what's the best way we could do. Do we have anybody here who can find out what's going on inside his room? Um, I don't think well, we have anybody who can. Who has about, the cloak of invisibility? How about instead of doing anything like that? How about we just walk straight up to him and ask him, hey, what's up? Let's just do this professionally versus trying to do it like, uh, you know, a spy tactics and stuff. Because if if he has any sort of magic himself, which he's from the Gulfs and he's Butterfield and he's super old and his door's frozen from what you told us, then, uh, yeah, he might have some sort of anti-spy magic going on in his own room. And then that could alert him to us trying to spy on him. I don't want any bad feelings leading up to this confrontation also he might just be completely insecure and think of anything that we do as an offense so the innkeeper, that. The innkeeper did mention that it seemed like his door was kind of frozen so there might be some magic at work there as well uh, but we can just yeah i guess if he's that much into the whole situation that we're dealing with maybe we should try to talk to him and see if he has any insight for us Go get him, Chodavir. You go knock on that door. <laughs> All right. Well, Matt, can you come with me? Can you bring some guns? Is it wise to what? send probably Chodavir? one of our, sorry, Chodavir, one of our least. Well, um... Yeah, I guess. Persuasive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go uh, with that. Persuasive. Yeah. How about you You go with the, uh, how about you go there, Musette? You're, you're pretty charismatic. I'm. I kind of trip over my own words, and I guess I'm not that good at uh, talking to people I've never talked before. Ben, guys just, just just be careful. Okay. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys that being careful is kind of your job, but are we All careful? Right. I hope so. Is there any sort of like protections at this hotel since we're all here under the fact that we're going to be doing this race? We can't hurt each other and stuff like that. Well, we're I'm the protection. Sad that I didn't get to eat. I was looking forward to that food. And now you've given her a mission. <laughs> now I have to go and talk to Butterfields. Uh, uh, oh. Well, we don't. Well, you know, we we, we, got we, could, we hey, could do this. We could. I do am this. so sorry. I just thought I would catch you guys before, but when you're all together before you left. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, you did. Uh, I have an idea. I have an idea. How hmm. about Musette goes and gets food? And then knocks on his door and says, "Oh, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong door." And then, yeah, get a peep in. Oh, that's and, that sounds like a great plan. Subterfuge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Without being well, too subterfuge. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Riley and that's a says, lot "I nicer. think, I think that if you killed him before the race was over, that you would be forfeit." From what oh. I remember from the the contract. Oh, who's talking about killing him? I mean, I'm, I'm, we're just yeah, talking we're about... we're just spying. I, I, I'm just <laughs> warning you. You guys kind of have a, a reputation for... Bring, bring an extra for muffin. The guy I said this. We, you know, we wouldn't be in all these bad situations if we stopped killing people first and asking questions later. It's pretty bad if Ralph is saying that. <laughs> but, but to <laughs> our credit, to we do get stuff done. Yeah. Uh, in a little chaotic kind of way. Yeah. But, well, uh, you have you have taken out the the heart and the I mean the eyes and the or, or the wings and the hand, right? 
Yeah, of Apexamendius. Yeah. Now we need to find out where the heart is and see what kind of threat that uh, is. Bringing. So yeah, I think Anastasia's got the right idea here. What do you guys think? Sure. Well, okay. and and I guess more importantly, let me know if you want me to run this race with you. Yes. Okay. Oh, sure. Th there's yes. another squad member staying in this hotel also. Not your squad. Uh, she's from... Or no, 78, sorry. Squad. Are she's you talking from about a left. paladin? Uh, her name is Pageant Storm. Do you remember her? She's an oh. Ethan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Pageant, yeah, Pageant she's, Storm. She's staying here in the hotel. I think she's upstairs in room seven. Ooh. Ethacs are strong. So, yeah, I guess we would love to hook up with her and see if she can uh, she can run with us because I feel like this is definitely a trap and uh, a straight shot there's got to be something more to it like there's got to be some way there's got to be something that we we can't do over the race or or something will happen so I don't know if it's going to be booby trapped or whatever but that that seems too simple to to just be like a straight shot race from the mountain down to the place there's got to be something said, more Bentley kind of speaks up and he says, well, I can tell you that uh, this race actually happens every year. I mean, at least the the Beatrix, you know, charity race happens every year. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not full of demons all the time, but uh, it's a pretty normal race and it's, uh, you know, it's not very dangerous on its own. I mean, I can't speak for all these golf skies and what they're going to do and Maybe they're setting traps. I have no idea, but but uh, I can tell you that the race itself is pretty legit. So you do this every year, but then every hundred years, it, it's a special race. Is that what you're saying? Uh, not here. I think that uh, I think she, I think she's Riley. I think you're talking about some somewhere else, right? And she says, "Yeah, yeah, that's um." That was in London in 1984. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Interesting. All right. So, yeah, but there's definitely going to be something in this race that either either there's going to be like that Butterfield faction that's going to try to trip us or trap us. So, yeah, I'm not sure if Butterfield is going to be a reliable source, even if we do talk to him. But, yeah, let's, let's see what he's got to say. I mean... He's kind of the guy who wants to set this up, and, and he's kind of the guy who has an issue with us. So let's go ahead and talk to him and see what he says. Okay. Okay. Right. I think probably um, Richard and I should go. Maybe Anastasia. Is it because I'm ugly? Yes. Actually, he, yeah, he, because he's got the highest, besides Musette, he's got the highest charisma out of all the, the whole group. Wait. Okay. So you're saying that I should just bring Ralph? Uh, I, I'm i not making any suggestions. I'm good. I don't know, Ralph. It sounds like you need to come with me. Okay, let's go. Okay, so who else is coming? Just Ralph and me? And and Richard? The Richard's just muted. saying bye. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All I saw was the wave. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so then I guess Ralph and I will go and check in on, what's he in room seven? Six. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Go! Six. Okay. Ooh. So you, you, you go and uh, knock on the door. Uh, so, so the first thing you see, notice about room six, the door is frozen over. It's really cold. Even just touching it, it kind of is rough. But you knock on the door. He says, yes, yes. Uh, and the, the door kind of swings open by itself, and you see him sitting there, sort of. Uh, Butterfield is sitting there. He's wearing a suit. He's kind of got blonde hair. Uh, and he's sitting there really comfortably, even though the whole room is frozen over like the door. Okay, well, we'll be outside the door. Hi! Uh, I just wanted to come and introduce... We just wanted to come and introduce ourselves... We're from uh, Squad 77. I'm Yuzette, and this is Raul. I think your AC is broken. Oh, it's quite, quite, quite comfortable. Uh, it's nice to meet you in person. I've heard lots and lots of things about you. What kind of things? Oh, uh, well, 
I think your leadership is in doubt. Uh, oh. You've got to... You're being led by Gaustus. Okay. And what else? Gaustus is a pretender. Gaustus wants to take away my power. Oh, why? Do you really want to get into all of that? I mean, it's just... It's well, we can have it later over some chicken. Golf's politics, you know. Oh. But it's good to meet you. So you're Ralph and Musette? Um, well, yeah, we just came to uh, to say hi and introduce ourselves. We let everyone else stay in the stay in the room because it was it was quite a journey through the Inovo. Um, mm. I'm uh, thank you for telling us that uh, apparently we're being led by Gaustus because that's the first I'm hearing of it. You, also, you, I you wanted don't to make know sure that... your AC wasn't working. You don't know who your leader is. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Uh, oh no, uh, I've set yeah. the climate to to my specifications. It's it's uh, very comfortable. Did you speak to the building manager before that? I don't want you to get in trouble. He just said he's comfortable. Okay. Um. So. Sorry. So back to Gaustus. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I mean we've been checking in with um, with the other squads. Uh, I mean, we I haven't spoken to Gaustus. The last time that I remember him being involved in any part or portion was when we were in Africa. But I think he has a current he's currently has a pact with one of your members, doesn't he? Maybe. We don't really get into each other's affairs. Is there somebody I should talk to? Gaustus? What well, talk to about what? I don't know. You said that somebody made a pact with a uh, Gaustus. Yes, yeah, someone in your group. Oh. I am aware of the pact, but I don't believe that the pact itself uh, influences any decisions. I feel that all of us uh, in our team, we make decisions together as a group. Like we don't have anyone who's an elected like leader. That's interesting. That's We're a know. democracy. Right. It sounds, I know that then it sounds to me like usual. Gaustus is a terrible leader and needs I, to be replaced. I think uh, I think that this race was uh, was well founded. Well, we don't talk to Gaustus, so it must be Chodavir who talks to him only. Does he tell yes, you that? I, I was uh, I was hoping to meet him, but that's okay. We'll. We'll all see each other in the race soon He's enough. He's not feeling good. He's been eating a lot of cheese. I don't know what that's like. It's <laughs> going to take a minute for him to be around. That's okay. We'll all meet each other in the race. Yeah. So what, what can I do for you? Do you want to come in? Well, no, I thought your AC was busted or something. I wanted to see if you were okay. I don't know what AC is, but I'm fine. Air this conditioning. This room is set the way up. I, I, the way I wanted it. No, we just wanted to come and introduce ourselves. Um, like I said, sorry. Well, it's um, nice to meet you. Thank Musette. you, though, for for telling us that. Um, Get more. Well, he, th everyone thinks we have a mole, it sounds like. But I don't feel that Trodevere has been acting really any different than he has been the entire time since we met him. This is true. You know, he's he's very, very concerned with uh, helping out his brother, uh, making sure his brother's okay. And uh, I do feel that he has Jericho Squad's best interest at heart. Um, but since this is an area of concern, we can definitely uh, sit down with him. Did we want to maybe uh, set up a time to meet after the race? That's an interesting thought. But I think that as my new employees, we'll have plenty of time to talk to each other after the race. What does that mean, new employees? I mean, it means that you'll be working for me once the race is over and we've won. Oh. You're going to win. Yes. How do you know that? Well, 
because I think that Gaustus is doing a terrible job leading your group. From what you've told me, he doesn't give you any direction at all. Well, how do you know you're going to win a race against people you haven't watched be physical? You don't know how fast we are. Don't assume. That's kind of rude. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, I think that we've probably reached a decent conclusion to this conversation. Good well, it was nice to meet race. you, Musette and Ralph, and I'll see you out on the race. Absolutely. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Blueberry. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. And the door closes. I love that. That was weird. <laughs> Who, whose name is Blueberry? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess let's run up, uh, run and tell everybody what's going on. All right, okay. then we can go grab some grub. Okay, yes. so I guess we'll run back into our room. Okay. Chodavir. Yes. You even found out. You fucked us. What? What did I do again? Your antenna shows everybody what you did. Oh, man. What the... I'm so sorry I did that that thing with the gulfs. This has just come back to bite us all in the ass, and I, I'm so regretful of that. You need to go but... say you're sorry to this man. Should I go talk to him? What did he no, say about me? Stay away from him. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> That's. I think that was the whole point of coming here. We know that he's not helpful. But what did he say? What, would you bring me up? No, I brought you up. Okay. All right. So, cool. Uh, what else did you get from him? Well, he says that we are being controlled by Gaustus. He also called us a bunch of slow pokes that are going to lose the race. Oh, yeah, that was weird. He said he, when he wins, and I don't think that that was any sort of, like, manifesting, oh, when I win, you know, sort mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, I have knowledge of how this race is going to end. Like it's rigged. Yeah. I think it's rigged. That sounds like he's trying to rig this thing. So, so we need to double rig it over his rigging. I mean, sure. That's that's one way to go around it. Uh, or we could double secret rigging. Out. Every time we try to rig anything, it's come back to bite us again, too. So I, uh, I think we need to resist this Butterfield feller. Yeah. It feels like he realizes that one of the people in our group, Chertevere, was susceptible to making a pact with a demon from hell. Um, yeah. Once he learned that and he realized that Gaussus was kind of connected to you, I feel like Butterfield's like, yeah, right, boy. I'm going to get in there and get all their souls. I he think he's also, just trying to infiltrate us because he thinks that we're weak. So I think we need to resist him because he's not getting our souls. He he also said that Gaustus is response, has been trying to strip him, Butterfield, of all his power. Well, hell is notorious for being deceptive. Any kind of doubt that they can try to sow into our minds could cause us to fall apart from within so you have to realize butterfield's not going to be telling you exactly what you want to hear he's going to be telling you what he wants you to hear so yeah he kept on saying that gaustus is our leader and tells us mm. what to do okay i think we've been caught inside a kind of a civil kind of war politics in hell um i think they think they got an in with me right so and since I made a pact with Gauss, they're assuming that we're all now in allegiance with the Gulfs, but we're not. They all think <laughs> yes. we have gout. Yep, basically that. Exactly so, so Chernovir, what when you talked to Gaustus yesterday, what did he say about Butterfield? Well, he said that there was going to be a lot of people in this race that belong to his faction, and that there's also going to be one person there uh, for Gaustus in the race. So now I'm starting to wonder, did he mean me or, or did he mean someone else? Because that was a little cryptic. So can we you, are here can on you ask of him? Gaustus, though. I guess I could try to contact him. Yeah, let me see if I can contact him about it. Let's see. Um, I have to focus on my antenna, right? Yeah. Do I have to do some sort of save? Yeah, not, not well, just to check. It would be just a, uh, an antenna. What, was, what did we say last time? I think it was. You gotta clack them together uh, and say, there's no I place. I think it was like an intelligence that. check. Yeah. Intelligence check. 
Okay, yeah. so it's plus four. Let's do an intelligence check. Oh, shoot. I got two plus three equals five. Yeah. So nothing, nothing's coming through, right? No. Nope, you are, you're distracted by everything that everybody just told you, and you're not able to get a clear picture of Gaustus in your mind. Mm. Can Kinda I try like to... Cable in the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me clean my antenna. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't look right. <laughs> okay, I'm just cleaning my antenna. All right, okay. so can I try that again one more time? Yeah. All okay, right, make another intelligence check. Everybody shut up. Let me focus. <laughs> I've got an 18. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. So you you hear Gaustus's voice pretty clear in your mind and he says, Judobia, it seems that you're on site getting ready for the race. Yes, but uh, I want to make it clear that the reason why we're here is we're we're trying to discover more about what happened to all those people in Durther City. I'm not here to do your bidding, but I, I wanted to say that there's a Butterfield here. Do you know him? Did you speak to Butterfield? I have not, but I believe that some of my uh, team members have met with him. Uh, and we're in the same inn. So he was standing... Did your team members make any kind of pact with him? I don't think so. Did you guys make any pact with him? No. No, obviously. I mean, <laughs> with all due respect, we know better. He accused us of uh, working for you and that you're trying to take his power away. So it looks like we're caught in this kind of political hell thing. Why is... don't you come upstairs? Come to room 10 upstairs. Okay. You also said there was going to be someone in the race working for you. Are you talking about me or someone else? I'm going to go upstairs. Okay. I'll see you up there. And he kind of disconnects. You'll see me? Okay. Where are you going? I'm, I, 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 so I talked to Gaustus. He says that Butterfield is dangerous, and he says I need to go to room 10 and uh, talk to whoever's there. So I'm going to cast Mage Armor, and I'm going to go out the door, and I'm going to go over to room 10. Anybody wants to come with me? He's here? Well, he told, me, with you. he told me to go to room 10, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find. So, Richard, if you come with me, that would be great. Um, go check out room 10. I'll put on my glasses. All right. Okay. Your you, glasses you that show the them? true form. Do what? Do you activate them? Yes. Okay. All right. Th those show you the true form of whoever yeah. you're looking at, right? All right. Let's go upstairs. Okay. Room 10. So you knock on the door to room 10 and you hear... Gaustus's voice saying come in and uh, the door opens and you see a man standing there uh, he's a, kind of got a vacant look he's got all black eyes and he's kind of looking down and Richard sees something completely different okay. uh, Richard sees Willem the spider oh yeah Willem the spider that can uh, shrink and stuff and never bothered to tell us that yeah are you Gaustus is that who are you I'm speaking through Willem okay so what did you want to tell me about this issue with Butterfield you remember that you rescued me from the fifth dominion where I was imprisoned I was there for three years and during the time that I was maimed and trapped Butterfield took over my station in the Iron City. Uh, Butterfield is terrified that I will rise up against him. And he sees my pact with you as a play to become the hero who led the team that defeated Apexamendios. And he wants to take that away. I see. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I think defeating Apexamendios is something we can all rally behind. I don't think that he really believes it's a threat the way that we know that it is. Well, maybe not for the Gulfs, but definitely for us here in the Dominions. It really is a threat to the Gulfs as well. Apexamendios will brook no other gods or powers. Right, right. 
So like he killed the goddesses, he might turn on the gulfs as well. That's what you're saying, if he comes back. Okay. Yeah, that would not be good for anybody. So I was looking into where, where the race is going to take place and what the trajectory is going to be. So it looks like it's going to be a straight shot. So I'm, I'm a little unclear about what we should expect, because it doesn't seem like the path of the race is easy to put traps on. But I'm guessing there's going to be the, the Butterfield faction is going to try to attack us. We're going to try to cheat their way into this race and we need to stop them. You could call it cheating, but it's really just the fact that the fact that they're demons and you're not. So they will be strong. They may reveal themselves and hurt or kill the other opponents through the course of the race. This kind of race happened 40 years ago. Do we have any insight on how they intend to take us out of the race? Can we expect physical attacks? Is there anything we need to do? Uh, is there anything we should avoid while doing the race with the demons? Should we stay away from them? Should we keep an eye on them? I think that they feel confident that that you, there's nothing you can do to them because they see you as, as nothing. Well, that's not but, very uh, fair. I know your capabilities. I've seen through your eyes what you can do. And I think that you can take them if you need to. If you can't outrun them, I think that you should destroy them. Okay. Well, I guess we've been through different situations before. We can't just be doing a race full of weapons, though, right, Richard? I think we should probably just go for with a, a small contingent of uh, self-defense items. But we definitely need to have guns with us when we're racing. I would be as armed as you can be. I know it's difficult to run with armor and weapons, but I would be as prepared as you can be. I mean, I think that running, in a, in a sense, is sort of secondary in this race. Who is going to be your agent in the race? Willem. And he oh, points gonna at himself. Yourself. Okay, well, right, right. Yeah. The spider guy? You're that doesn't the seem fair. Right He's got eight legs. Eight legs, right? <laughs> yeah, eight legs are better than two. All right. Well, I think, R Richard, do you have any other questions? Who are we talking to right now? Gaustus, uh, speaking through Willem, and you see a spider in the room. Yeah. So what, Willem is the spider. Oh, yeah. I don't think yeah. that Richard was there for all that. Yeah. So you got the glasses. So he, what do you yeah, see? Yeah. So you see a, a spider that takes up almost the entire the entire hotel room. It's huge. Yeah, uh, it looks kind of like a. It's 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 all black, uh, kind of like a little bit, but a little but furry, but no brown hair. It's all black hair uh, and eight red eyes. Not gonna lie, I hate spiders. <laughs> uh, oh, you're saying? I'll a tell spider. you what. Okay, I see a guy. I'm just kind of confused now. The more that we know, the more I realize we don't know. Is this a race or is this a ritual? It's a race that's part of an ancient pact between uh, the humans and, and the gulfs. If a human no, wins, the then, then the demon's not allowed to take the place of some kind of public official or, or in, in your case, uh, run the squad, your squad. And honestly, depending on your capabilities, he may decide he wants to replace some of you if he wins. Or all of you. I have... You know, I don't know how I don't know in his estimation what he thinks your capabilities are. But he doesn't know you like I do. But the officiating bodies that be Jericho, I don't know. It just sounds weird. But um yeah, we'll go back with the knowledge we have now and formulate a plan on how we can prevent catastrophe. And let me just say that Butterfield may believe that I'm running your group. But you know different. You know that's not true. I know what the threat is, and I know your capabilities, and I have faith in you, and I'm only lending my power to help. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that you're doing this out of kindness of some sort? That's surprising. Well, you also saved me, although it was a member of your squad that did all this to me. And he, he, um, he for, sort of forgetfully points at his arm and his eye, although what you're just seeing a guy pointing at a normal arm and a normal eye and Richard seeing some nonsense with spider legs. But um, but Gaustus, if you remember, had lost his arm and his eye 
and yeah. uh, and now he has a robotic ones. Well, I appreciate that uh, that you're looking out for us. I'll do the best we can and see if we can uh, win the race. I guess that that's gonna a lot is at stake for this one. I guess we need to make sure that we uh, do. We know how many? Uh, do we know how many of the other players uh, or runners are gonna be? Um, I believe there are a lot. Oh, okay. That's not good. Okay, I guess we all got to run and we all got to bring guns. And there will be also people who have no idea. There will be racers from wherever this place is. Innocent bystanders, huh? Yes. Just thinking they're doing a charity race. Exactly. So we not only have to defend ourselves, we had to protect the other people as well. Well, that's that's a good opportunity to show what Jericho Squad can do, I guess. All right. If Willem wins, things will go on as they have. I'm not putting any undue influence over you now, and I don't plan to do that in the future. So I'm just uh, letting you know. Let Willem do his thing. He'll, he'll try to help you as much as he can, and he may, may win the race. He's a part of your team. Okay. There's There there it is. There's the, uh, the deal. I guess we'd, we'd have to discuss that but I think for now that's fine we can do that so I'm going to tell the other uh, members of the team what's going on and and we'll uh, we'll race tomorrow and do the best we can I'll see you tomorrow alright let's go back downstairs me and Richard <laughs> that's weird uh, upstairs there was a guy uh, Richard saw Willem if you can remember William Willem. I remember uh, that guy yeah that spider and apparently he said there's going to be a lot of people from Butterfield in the race tomorrow. There's other going to be innocent bystanders in the race as well. People who just think that they're just doing charity work. <clears throat> and so if Butterfield wins, then it would be bad because he would keep control of, you know, whatever the gulfs are. But he would also be able to take over control of who leads our team. Apparently, this is, comes from an old agreement that Jericho Squad did with the Gulfs many years ago. And that's what we're, we're, we're at stake at, in this race. That's, what it's, that's what's at stake, is uh, whether who's going to run hell and who's going to run our team. Um, so I guess we got to do the best we can tomorrow. Um. Uh, should we all run? I it would seems say... seems pretty delicate. Yeah, I mean... Why don't uh, we just um, leave? They're definitely all. Well, if we leave, we forfeit. So if we so forfeit, then they can't make us do anything. We just lose a Jericho squad title, and uh, we keep doing what we're doing. Okay, so do we truly believe that Gaussus is our friend? Is he an actual no. ally? I don't think he's a is friend. There... I, I think he's... Well, if you, if you go back to what happened when we met him... Um, we yeah, I mean, you guys made a pact with him for Cassius' had, soul, right? I had to make a pact with him because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get out of that situation. So I was kind of entrapped into doing that. And uh, it, it was hard. I For one time I had like spider eyes and now I have these stupid antenna in my head. I just want to do whatever I can to get rid of this. But um, I don't trust him. I mean, I think he's also self-serving. And he did put a request that if 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 we win the race, if Willem wins the race, he gets to join our team, which you know, I mean, I'm not particularly crazy but, about that. I don't that, like wasn't, that, idea. that wasn't. I what don't he like said. that either. Oh, that wasn't what he said. No, I thought he said if if we win, Willem has to join our race, our our team. No, he's a part of our team. If he wins, then that means that we win. I don't like that idea. Still, oh, I don't think, okay. I don't yeah. think Willem should be given an opportunity to win. Well, it wouldn't really be Willem that wins at that point. It's Gaussus that wins. He said if he See? won, nothing See? would Richard change. See, Richard gets it. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, I don't know what that means. If he says he wins, nothing would change. So, so that means right now we are the pawns of Gaustus, and we're going up against Butterfield and his minions. And if we lose, that means Butterfield takes over Gaustus. So it's all about realistically who do we want to be if we have to be packed to one of these guys, would we rather be packed to Gaustus, since we have a history with him, or this dirty-sounding Butterfield guy who's cold? 
I mean, <laughs> it's cold. It's we don't know anything it's, about it's this. But cold hearted for sure. I mean, <laughs> right. I know from my time on the fifth that uh, some religions believe there's different levels of hell or the gulfs. Um, and some of those are different, like uh, some are hot, some are cold. So I know that he's probably coming from some cold level of hell. Um, where does Galstus reign from? I know they're all in the gulfs, but. I don't know. I think that's something that we should weigh. Should okay. we continue to let Gaussus drive us and have us even be in this race so that way he doesn't lose whatever precious control he has in his little dominion of hell? Or do we let Butterfield take over Gaussus? And then maybe that would stop the pact that you have with him and then we'd no longer be in league with the Gulfs. Exactly. I think that this is actually a really, really good idea. And I know this is underhanded, but what if we just give Willem to um to butterfield hmm that's that's an interesting choice we just met this guy what butterfield yeah yeah but also we don't want to have to be a t continuously to gaustus apparently all this stuff that we've been going through all these hardships are stemming from our relationship excuse me trudevere's relationship and then us by yes. extension gaustus yes. I'm tired of dealing with it. <laughs> it's easy to jump ship. I also um, liked what Ralph said about why do we have to stay as Jericho? I mean, I guess we need the base and the uh, resources, but uh, we kind of just, we could just be our own hero team. I think that's Gauss's influence in you. He just wants you to be a representative of hell. I don't think people would refer to us as a hero team. No. No, no. Our... Our uh, likability is pretty, it's pretty darn low right now. Yeah, we're, we an, we're an anti-hero team. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, our Jericho rate squad is a lot last. higher than our saving rate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get to talk to Butterfield, but it looks like you guys said that he can kind of have these weird vibes. And, uh, and I he, don't know. Basically, what I think is that I don't want us to have to do this. But if we do have to race, I think we should not allow either Willem running for Gaustus or uh, Butterfield. I swear that's a James Bond villain. He, um, I, I, I don't think we should allow either side to win. And even though those guys want to take charge of us, if we win, one of us wins, you know... We get rid of them. I like I like that, Ralph. I like that. We shouldn't let either of those guys win. We should make sure one of us or a human wins the race. And then probably amend whatever agreement that was so this BS doesn't happen anymore. Because the point of Jericho Squad that I feel like I've learned is that we keep uh, the politics neutral. And right now we at, we're fighting a two-party system from hell. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to see which which of the lesser of the two evils we should help, and maybe we shouldn't help either of them. I agree. Yeah, I, I don't. I Here's think we're the, kind of at that point. The Beatrix in. Oh, nice. That's mm. sick. <laughs> we haven't Humbly. destroyed this place yet. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty. Dude, so I want an Airbnb there. What I'm getting from you guys. Bentley in there. We'll live out of it. What I'm getting from you guys, and I want to hear from Anastasia too, is like we should just run on this race for ourselves and to to help humanity or to help Jericho and try to avoid any of the gulfs getting any sort of uh, leverage by winning this race. Chodavir has gained the power of self-respect. <laughs> hey. okay. well, well, definitely, should we... We, we, we shouldn't. I mean, on, honestly, it's never a good idea to submit yourself to like anybody that's demonic. So it's I, I honestly don't want to be underneath yeah. either one. Or beholden. Well, Ralph to has one. also been pacted to Baphomet since the start of the game. Yeah, but he ain't okay. getting in our business. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> let's let's think about this though. The ultimate goal, I guess, would be to stop Hapeximindios, um, and so we would need the help of all of these different religious entities, even if we don't agree with them. So, uh, hell is a real place. The gulfs, as long as we can allow them to continue to help us fight against Hapeximindios. Um, I think that would still 
you know, be good to be in league with them because they are a reckoning force. I don't know. I feel like defending them is just defending all religion at that point. Whereas the Pax Mindios is the end of all everybody's unique religions. So I think that maybe we're not just doing the bidding of hell. Or we're just doing the anti Pax Mindios bidding at that point. So yeah, I, we're just we're just going to kill them during the race and then call it, right? Sorry. About the religions, I think that that's Anastas Anastasia. Sorry. <laughs> Anastasia's um, area of expertise. Like I said, I don't want to be beholden to anybody. So, and besides, they're going to try to kill us. So, Same regardless. <laughs> I agree. So, True. what do we know about Butterfield's connection to... He thinks that Apexamendio's heart is a threat, right? To his control of the Iron City. And uh, so, he thinks it's not, but Gauss has said he believes that it is a danger to the gulfs because Hepexamendios doesn't take any gods before him, so any other powers. So if Hepexamendios did come back, this would be a problem for the gulfs as well as everybody else. So I understand where Richard's coming from. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. But in this case, yeah, I think we're all kind of trying to get away from the gulfs. We don't really want to keep getting connected to them. And we want to show that uh, we're here for the world right the fifth and all the other dominions that's who we're protecting i think since we have already taken care of the hand and the heart of apex uh, the hand and the wings of apex Mendios, that i think the heart we could probably also deal with it on our own uh, we wouldn't be needing the help of any gulfs to do that i'm just saying so i guess that's a gamble that we take if we decide to just do this for ourselves and make sure that neither of the gulfs powers win the race because I think that is important right yes cool I'm in let's do the race and let's 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 um, let's not work for either side then let's work for our side cool all right so how, how does, does this race work is it a foot race yes it's a foot race okay <laughs> Sorry. Um, do we want to attempt? It's on mopeds. <laughs> Real quick, sorry. Real Little quick. Vespus. What happens to <laughs> Gaustus if Butterfield wins? Not. I know that we'll probably get screwed over if Butterfield wins, but what happens to Gaustus? Does he get turned into a lesser demon? He didn't say anything about that, but I, I guess that he would be concerned about... Yeah, I think Gaustus would be concerned about losing his leverage with our team because then Butterfield would turn us into his employees somehow because of this old agreement. Butterfield <laughs> used that exact term when he said he would win. Yeah. He oh called, yeah, when we went to introduce ourselves. He called. He said we'd be his employees. Huh. So yeah, I guess that's what he's thinking about. So if he wins, he would take us over for due to some old me, uh, old agreement with the Jericho squad leadership. This just seems really weird the more I think about it. Uh, but, uh, okay. So yeah, we we can't help anybody. We have to do this for ourselves to keep our independence and not stay beholden to any other hellish powers, I guess. Bentley kind of chimes in and says, did they say an agreement with Jericho? I don't remember that. Wasn't what what did Bonafide, no, not Bonafide, but what did uh, Riley say? I thought she said that this was a no, race. No, she, she said it was an agreement with, with, uh, with humans. Oh, an agreement with humans, not Jericho. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I got the idea that this was with Jericho because. No, I think Jericho is just stuck with it like everybody else. I see. Okay. So it's a us versus them in terms of the Dominions versus the Gulfs. Yeah, I mean, originally probably just the Fifth Dominion, but now it looks like it's spreading out. And I think when Butterfield is saying that he would take over our team, he means he would take us as slaves, I guess. It doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good, right? No. Okay, so yeah, I'm good for that. Let's let's prepare. I think we should be armed and ready in the race just in case anybody tries to attack us. Because it's a straight shot, so I'm guessing they're going to try duplicity to um, to um, to hurt us. So 
Once again, do sorry, I never had this uh, question answered. Do we all have to run? Or maybe it was answered last time. Should we keep someone oh, yeah, outside? That's that's an interesting uh, no. uh, question. Should we keep someone out? That way no they way. can... Okay. No way. I think if we do that, they could be singled out and killed separately. But I think we're going to end up having a big battle. And I think we need all of our resources combined. Yeah, Gauss did say that Butterfield had a lot of people in the race. So like if, Richard if said... he's got a lot of people in the race... We need everybody. That means... He's probably got a lot of other people that won't be in the race. And if we're all racing, there's no one to defend us. Right. So then the question is, should we go get dinner? Since it's dinner time <laughs> now, I guess. And should we go make some allies? Yeah. It, or, you know, drum up the allies we already have. Because we haven't hurt everyone that's here. That We have people that are on our side here. Maybe we should get the spider to sit out the race, which this that's a stupid idea. It won't work. No, but the, remember, the spider can hide weapons. But the spider's being controlled. And he can change sizes, though, too, right? Yep. How and, big can he make himself? But the spider doesn't know that we're not going to be on his side. I mean, if he makes himself big enough, can he just take one step to the finish line? <laughs> Well, we should also rules against that. We should also get in touch with Pageant Storm then, because she's an Oathak and they're good at fighting. So if she's gonna race and she belongs to another Jericho squad, maybe she could run with us too. We... That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, and Riley's gonna run with us too, so I think everybody needs to run, right? Let's yeah, all just, run. Let's get I'm some just, food. Yeah, I'm running. Calm down. I'm gonna win this thing. Let's do this race. All okay, right. Bentley. Bentley's enthusiasm is uh contagious. Yes. So I guess we're all running because uh, uh I think if anything happens, it will be in the race, not at the margins of the race or outside of the path of the race. So it's going to be in the race. So it's going to be the agents in the race that are going to attack us if they do. So I think we should all race. One other thing I would suggest is uh, we run with a buddy. Buddy. Like sure. it, it, Instead of just kind of going balls to the wall and trying to go as fast as we can each individually, you know, stay with your buddy. That way you've got backup regardless because you don't want to be zooming out there all by yourself because that makes you a sitting duck. Sure. Yeah. Like, like, uh, I know Bentley's going to be, Bentley's going to be a ringer. He's going to want to go straight. Bentley, do you want to run with Anastasia or are you just going to do the best you can? I think I'm faster than Anastasia. I think okay. somebody with healing powers needs to run with Shodavir. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be good too. Buddies, <laughs> running buddies. <laughs> All right. Me and Anastasia. And then I guess Ralph and Musette and okay. Richard and uh, uh, Pageant Storm, maybe? Well, we haven't even talked to Pageant Storm. That's right. That's right. Well, let me go find her Assuming room. She said yes. She'll say so, yes to Richard. Hey, one thing really quick, and and uh, and Bentley lifts up the the living armor, the car that looks like an insect carapace. He says, "You guys left this behind. Should I put this on?" What is that? You guys that found living, it. It, it, living was armor. The, it was the armor off of the uh, that angelic creature that you guys killed in in Darthur City. Oh, well, can that's you run fast have... with that? Can, I don't can know. Can you run with that? What do you know about it? His armor. Who so it's okay that? to put on then. Nah, don't on. put it on, Bentley. Can't remember. I'll Wait. put it on. Let me put it on first to see if it hurts. <laughs> there was something about that armor, right? I, I who did the magic thing? Wasn't Check wasn't that the thing that it's cursed and when you put it on or something? Yeah. Do you guys remember that? Let me see if I had anything written. It had here. a negative aspect to it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Who kept that? I know we just. I know that Bentley pulled it up, but uh, did we put that in anybody's inventory? No. That just kind of, that was one of the ones that got just it's, left behind. It, I think it's called living armor. Living armor. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you should put that on, Bentley. That's no. just gonna weigh you down, right? Okay. Maybe Shodavir should put it on. Hmm. I don't know. No, <laughs> because I have to save my healing spells. 
<laughs> so it says that while wearing the armor, you have a plus one bonus to armor class, and you have resistance to the following damage types, necrotic, poison, and psychic. That's what Living Armor D&D 5th Edition says. Is that right, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, this is Living Armor Studded Leather. It says it is symbiotic in nature, though. The armor can't be removed from you while you're attuned to it, and you can't voluntarily end your attunement to it. I think we already found this out when we got the armor, right? You told us all this stuff. Yeah. If you're targeted by a spell that ends a curse, your attunement to the armor ends and it detaches from you. Oh, okay. The armor requires flesh blood be fed to it. Immediately after you finish any long rest, you must either feed half your remaining hit points to the armor. Hit, or hit take dice, one, not hit points. Oh, hit dice to the armor. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, so you don't actually take get hurt. You lose your ability to short rest and use hit dice to heal yourself. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's a good idea, Bentley. I think that would be, um, that wouldn't be good for you. Okay, yeah, it sounds pretty bad. He says, "I'll wear my old one," and he put he uh, he grabs his his uh, studded leather armor, and they magically sort of transform so it looks like a running outfit. Yeah, hey, he's got that's the nice. the glamoured studded leather armor. That is useful. All right, let's go grab one uh, dinner. I guess. It's, yeah, yeah. It uh, was eleven th- a, a while ago, and now it's already dinner time. No, it's not really dinner time. It's more. It's only been about an hour. Okay. Yeah, so you guys could have lunch. Um, I want to see uh, second breakfast. Yeah, there, there's a there's a breakfast at in Beatrix is the name of the place, and it's just only um, it's it's next door. Let's go check out that breakfast place then, right next sure. door. All right, we're all going there. Okay. All, all right, so you, you head over to breakfast in Beatrix, and it's. Uh, it looks it looks pretty similar to the Beatrix Inn, except only being one story. Uh, there are about six tables there, and you see um, you see other people uh, sitting at the other tables, but there's only about six or seven tables there, um, and uh, and they they seat you down, and and um, they have pretty pretty basic stuff, but some of the some of the things uh, people not from uh, not from the other dominions may not recognize. Uh, there's like doeki steak and I'm having the fried zarzi. That's good. All right. I think zarzi is our grits. flies. Yeah, with grits. <laughs> okay. They're like shrimp. <laughs> All right then. Yep. Anastasia knows what shrimp is. Yeah. She's from Nola. Yeah. Got that right. Make some gumbo out of it. You see one guy that's uh, two tables down. Who's who's um, he's he's barefoot, and he's taking a he's got huge calluses on his feet, and he's taking a round file and filing grooves in the calluses in his feet. That's gross. <laughs> Maybe that's the Parmesan cheese. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Um. That's kind of gross. Excuse I'm gonna me, pretend. sir. Do you have to do that here and where everyone's eating? Don't talk to them. <laughs> he says, I'm, gotta... I'm preparing for the race. I need traction. <laughs> I know, but there's food here and people are eating and you're getting your particles and everyone's food. You should try shoes. I, if you don't, want I haven't seen any of them go any further than the floor under my foot. But if Still any of nasty. them got into your food, I apologize. Just, Wait a minute, your food hasn't even arrived yet. <laughs> I'm anticipating for when my food shows up. All you're, right, you're I'll, I'll do the rest of this in my room. I'll see you out there on the race. And he kind of narrows his eyes at you. Now he's got to walk oh, lopsided. But this is a shared public space. He's <laughs> shamed him out of the restaurant. What? I'm with you. It's a shared public space. We <laughs> have common decency here. Musette's over decency. here becoming uh, the nightbreed version of Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. yeah. You, you also see Pageant Storm sitting at a table by herself. Pageant, come sit with us. She says, ah, yes. I saw I, I saw you uh, you telling off that man from Ephatoy. Good job. He was nasty. That was rude. I'm glad that somebody said something. So, Pageant, um, would you like to run with us tomorrow? I um, we've got some well, information I... you might find uh, interesting. 
you know, I was signed up for this race before all of this business with the gulfs and whatnot. Uh, I'm surprised. I just wanted to run a race. Yeah, do you usually do, you usually do this one every year? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, well, I feel for these people in Beatrix. It's horrible what happened. What are you um, talking about? Well, Bentley knows. I mean, the, the, this place was flattened 30 years ago. The Autark came in with his shock troops, and they just leveled this place and killed almost everyone. You can hardly terrible. tell now. It looks great. But uh, back then, it was bad. Yeah, bad right. times under the Autark. Hack two! I spit on the floor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that guy was terrible. Um, yeah. Anyway, so there is a lot at stake at this one. You, do you know about the Gulfs and their agreement with the humans uh, in terms of this race? No, I'm not a human, so I, yeah, I don't know. All right. Can I, I... I've I've heard I heard to to be careful and that there's going to be some bad guys in the race and try to protect people. That's that's pretty much it. Should I, let me aside to Bentley and be like, hey Bentley, do you think I should give her the rundown on what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, yes. I don't see why okay. not. <laughs> All right. So instead of repeating everything, I'm just going to say I I explained to I explained to her who's Butterfield, what's going to happen, what we can expect, and what's at stake in this race. She says, oh, wow, that's a lot. There's, you guys have a lot going on. But at yeah. least your squad is still intact, unlike mine. Yeah, but people don't like us very much. We were hoping that this would, would help us uh, rebrand. Hmm. Well... Yeah, I mean, the, the the drama from your uh, squad kind of spilled over into mine and destroyed it. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That was also uh, because of Cassius Breyer. Yeah. yeah, well, he's gone again. Yeah, he was a member of your group. Yeah, now I'm starting to think that he might have escaped the Gulf with Butterfield's help. And I kind of look at the rest of our squad like, you guys know what I'm talking about. Because I don't know how... I don't know how Cassius escaped from the Gulfs, but now that we've known Butterfield, maybe he helped him out. So, yeah, that wasn't good. Um, so if we if we try to defeat the Gulf forces, I think we should come out on top. You want to win the race anyway, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah. And you guys are the best warriors. Othax are always... You guys certainly have uh, a lot of tolerance and a lot of strength, so that would that would really help us. She kind of side eyes Bentley and says, "I may have shorter legs, but I think I can outrun you." I look at. I Bentley, don't think we like... can let Chertevir win. <laughs> okay. Well, because uh, I think by proxy that would mean Gauss this one because you got. Uh, you know. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like for optics, I agree. Okay. Sorry, okay, okay. Chertevir. That's, That's a fine. good point. Uh, you guys can take point, and I can be behind you guys. Um, yeah. I think that it, I think that if you look at the comparative like athletics skill, you don't have much to worry about. Yeah, I do okay. have a plus seven in athletics. <laughs> I got big legs though. I got big legs. I'm like almost six feet and something. So I'm just plus two. I'm just lanky and bookish, I guess. So the running is not really for me, but I'll do the best I can. I got my ribbon sword here, weighs next to nothing, so I can carry this with me, and I will be there to protect everybody else. I've chased and, down a uh, lot of criminals in my day. This and at this point, like uh, at this point, they bring out your food and uh, kind of. At first, they mix up who's got what, but then you guys all figure it out and swap them around. Nobody wants Chertovir's so accurate. Zarzi. Zarzi and Grits. Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> nom, right. nom, 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 nom. Nom, nom, nom. Gotta get the power. So the race is tomorrow, right? So uh, I think yeah. we should... We should. Uh, do you guys want to strategically check out where the uh, starting of the race is going to be? Do you guys want to... What do you guys want to do after this? Yeah, I think Probably we should definitely go, go to the top of the race and check out the, the starting line and everything. Tajin Storm says, "How are you? Good? Are you gonna walk all that way? I, I, 
I, oh, yeah. I have we a question. A huh. I have a question. Um, one of my spells that I have uh, allows me to sprout wings and fly, um, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's only available during fights or whatever. Um, is that something that I could do now and then we take our long rest and then we're rested the next day? Yeah, you could do it now. Um, but I, I think, how long does it last? I don't think it's very long. And your flying speed might be the same as your walking speed. Radiant Soul. Once per long rest is an action, you can transform, gaining, gaining glimmering eyes and two incorporeal wings for one minute or until okay. you end it as a bonus action. Yeah. Um, would sorry, that be it? No, I'm sorry. sorry. I, for interrupting. Go ahead. Um, so, I mean, honestly, I don't think I would need to do that again, even if we got in a fight, because I'm kind of concentrating on making sure everybody doesn't die. So if we're using, if we're needing to physically, visually look at the course and I mean, they're telling us it's a straight shot, but we haven't physically seen it yet. Right. So I've um, seen it. I've run this race before. How and long Pageant is it? Storm says, I, yeah, I've run this race too. How well, I mean, it? it's 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 for one minute, but you know, if I'm just kind of you know being like a like a drone going up and you know visualizing the the course, yeah. it's kind of equivalent to a five k. It's not okay. super long. Okay, That's what so I was ask. three so, miles sh shouldn't yeah. take me long. Okay, so it would take a while to get up there and check out the uh, starting line. So I guess. I don't know. Honestly, I think as a team, if we're securing this, we should probably find a way to to check out the. We've got the rest of the day before the race. I don't know. Maybe I want to go about investigate. to the halfway mark and yeah. stash bottles of water. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. Well, okay. So it is lunchtime. We just finished lunch. Um, yeah. Technically, we shouldn't have even checked into the hotel yet. So we do have plenty of time available to us what time does the race start tomorrow it's about eight o'clock in the morning first thing in the morning okay yeah well let's uh bentley says they'll bring they'll bring doing. over a bus at the at at the hotel for anybody that's running the race uh to get up to the top what time's the bus show up seven yeah now i think before. about an hour before so Bonafide said that there was a lot of people at the end that were going to run at the race. I wonder if, I wonder if there's all of them over there. I don't know how many people are going to run, but uh, if Butterfield was at the end, maybe some of his cronies are also at the end. Maybe we should keep our eye out at the end tonight and see if there's any use of magic or anything sly going on. And and um, and at this point, uh, the Ethac she says. Um, pageant storm it says did you guys see door number six it's all like frozen oh yeah we went and introduced ourselves it's a guy named butterfield he likes the ac on yeah all the way about it i don't think that we have air conditioning here i don't know he said that it was butterfield does. he made it a nice like yeah, he's from the climate gulps. for himself but do you know anything about him? No. no I wonder I wonder if Butterfield, like if he were to walk down into the hallway, if the frost would follow him and leave where he was before. So like, is he just like have this aura of frost all around him? Could he potentially go to the start of the race and then the race just freezes and he just like skates down to the bottom? Like Silver Surfer? Like Silver Surfer or something, yeah. I, I guess we won't know. Or is it, or is it cold just because he's got that like a spell in that room? Or is he the emanating source of the cold? No, he said it was for his his own. He, he set the room's uh, temperature and climate to his own specifications, so like for his own uh, body type or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, you might be onto something there. Um. Uh. Who can blast fire? Me. I, I before we blast fire at, <laughs> at his door, Butterfield. I guess we should just. Uh, I guess we should just uh, try to investigate uh, if there's use of magic around the inn. Oh, let's just like have that. Muset run next to him. Yeah. Or behind him. 
we won't know what he can do with that until either he tells us or he does it, right? And she blasts fire. I don't stuff like that in public anymore. Oh. Well, also, that... remember, we're supposed to be careful for the civilians. Are there, um, do we know if there's rules for this? Maybe we should try to talk to Riley and see. Yeah, if Bentley, what what's the rules, the rules of this? this race? Can they use magic? Are you talking about the rules for the uh, charity race or the rules for this other thing from the gulfs that's kind this, of layered on top the of the particular it? thing we're concerned about? Yeah, the, the I don't know anything about the rules for the um, for the gulfs part. You might want to talk to R Riley about that. Yeah, okay. Well, Riley's in the inn. Uh, let's go there and talk to her, or I can go there and talk to her. Okay, sorry. To reconfirm, Pageant Storm knew nothing about about Butterfield. Correct? No, she did. Yeah, she didn't know anything. Copy that. Thank you. She's not very perceptive, man. Her whole squad got infiltrated by these guys, and she didn't even know. Point. Well, they were different guys. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go over there, and I'm gonna. Riley said she was in a. Did she give us her room number? I forgot. Uh, one. She's in room number one. It's right across the hall from you guys. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm going to go over there and knock it goes on her one, door. two, three down the left side and then four, five, six down the right side. I'm going to go there. Like and... hotels in it, you know, that we're used to. They're a little less organized. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, Riley, are you there? Ah, yes. Cherduvir. Good to see hey. you again. Did so, you have breakfast? Yes, we went to... Uh... You know, the, the the inn next door. I had some nice Sarsi with grits. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just wondering, this gulf agreement with the humans, uh, this race, I mean, everybody here in Beatrix only seems to know that this is just a charity race that happens every year. But you mentioned that today is a special race right that this happens every hundred years and the last time was 40 years ago yes. are there any special rules to that agreement that we should be aware of if you start a fight with any of with uh with any of these uh gulfs factions before the race starts then it's forfeit and they just win by default okay are they are we allowed is is magic use allowed in the race I would say so. I mean, you know, they're mm. kind of magical by just innately, right? So, right, right, right. I, I don't think, you know, I think that if if you get in a fight with them, they're not going to hold back. But are we, if we're defending ourselves in the race, would we be disqualified if we get into a fight? Don't, so, hey, uh, just don't throw the first punch. Yeah, that sounds sounds standard for any sort I, of event. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, they're probably all going to look like normal people to start with. Mm. They're going to be in disguise. Okay. So it's not going to be immediately obvious who the gulf is and who right. the humans are. Okay. Although if you went and visited Butterfield, you may recognize him. What constitutes starting a fight? Uh... You know what? I would just say... Because what if they start a fight with us? We cannot be held responsible for what we might do. I, I, I can see why you're concerned after what happened with the circus and everything, but I would just say that um, just sort of make sure that other people can see what you're seeing, and I think you'll be okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, like, if, if you're fighting a demon... I think that no one's going to begrudge you using everything you have. But if the demon shows up like a real person, won't it seem like we're doing the same thing that other people have seen us do on TV, that we're attacking random people? Uh, I guess we'd have to find a way of unmasking them first. The, mm. I just we're don't want to be interrogated by someone saying why did you guys shoot this guy or why did you guys do this in front of everybody and then we have to say because he was a demon and then they look at us like we're crazy and then you some know asshole what? That, video that's records also... and they review the tapes and like it looks fine to us you're just assholes that, that's also why i'm running the race with you uh-huh okay because okay. uh you now you'll have an official from jericho official. 
who who uh, will be able to see what you see, hopefully. All right. Um, sounds good. I, we were thinking about running uh, with a buddy. So if you want to run with us, uh, you can pick someone to run with. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we completely glossed over that we're supposed to recognize Butterfield. I'm just saying that you, if you've met him already, you'll know what he looks like when if he's in the race. Oh, yeah. Looks, yeah. We'll point it in, out to in, you. If he has a uh, human disguise, anyway. Oh, I'm going to tell Riley that there's also, we also know there's going to be someone representing another faction of the Gulfs. And it's going to be a, uh, you're going to see him as a, a man with black eyes, but he's really like a spider from hell. And he's representing who again? Well, this is Riley, so I'm assuming she knows the story with Gaustus. Gaustus. Okay. Yes. So he's he he's uh, is he on your side then? Well, I wouldn't say he's on our side, but he's the guy that we did that pact uh, with a while ago, and then we delivered Cassius Briar to him. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, Butterfield thinks that his connection to me means that he's running our team, which is untrue. But I just want to let you know that there's more at stake here. There's a internecine faction uh, going on with the Gulfs where both Butterfield and Gaustus are competing for something. So I think they both have to lose so the humans come out on top. Hmm. Okay. Are you you're you're kind of messing with your pact? Well, I fulfilled my side of the pact with Gaustus. I don't think I owe him anything else, and it would be nice to be able to get rid of these things that are in my head. So I don't want to keep doing pacts with that guy anymore. You don't even get radio with those things, do you? AM only. Oh God, it sucks. You made got more screwed than- on that deal. Did you make more than one pact with him? No, I just did the pact of promising him the uh, soul for Cassius Briar when we defeated him. Hmm. I didn't do any other pacts with him. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll uh, we'll see you in the race tomorrow. Uh, I'll be there. Awesome. And uh, and yep. So who was here? Was it just me or was it everybody else? Yeah, good question. So otherwise I got to go downstairs and I'll relay everything we discussed. She's Riley is downstairs. She's across the hall from you guys. Yeah. Okay. So I'm guessing, did you guys hear that? I mean, I thought we were on the same room together. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know That's unless you tell me that you're coming. Right with me. here. We heard it. Right. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Right. Looks like all we gotta do is uh, run tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> but what if messing with the packs kills Chertevere in the end? Oh no. That won't happen. It won't happen. Anastasia won't let it happen. Yeah, I'll bring him back. It'll be fine. <laughs> I, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get rid of these antenna. Well, go get some scissors, yo. I, well, I don't want to mutilate myself. I want them to disappear. <laughs> anyway. You're probably going to have to chop them off afterward anyway. I mean, <sighs> don't tell me that. I, I'm, 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 I don't like pain. Burn it. Shut. All right, let's do this race. All right. Okay. Tomorrow. So you guys talked about investigating the hotel and are like knocking on other doors or did you want to do that or you do are we skipping probably to not i don't i don't I guess know we could, okay i i i'm at i'm at the end so i inspect my surroundings i i see what uh if there's any weird things going on in in the hallways just the what you already knew about with number six yeah the the frozen door nothing yeah. else no okay. Okay, so we really only know who's in four of the 12 rooms. Us yeah, you... and the three people that we've met. So there's eight rooms that we don't know who's in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, is this like a bed and breakfast? Like, do we all have to have breakfast together tomorrow? Uh, not really. There's, no, uh, there's no 
I mean, that's why the restaurant is next door is Copy because that. Okay, there's, so no, there's no like community yeah. space. Okay, so we can't yeah. like get up early and just sit around in the lobby. Not really. There isn't even much people. of a, there isn't even really a lobby. Mm. Okay, never mind. Does anybody have detect magic or anything like that? Um, I have, let's see. Why? I mean, we live in a land full of magic. Everyone in this building has it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking. I have it, but why? <laughs> and I have identify. Well, if we I guess we were trying to see if the rooms are showing off any sort of magic creatures inside them. There's well, literally a giant my, spider. You my, talk to a giant spider. That's true. That's well, true. My, <laughs> my detect magics, uh, basically, um, it's supposed to detect uh, a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. So, basically, unless they open the door, all I'd be able to do is maybe see a faint aura around it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that... <laughs> It just means it's close, but uh, again, all of our creatures are magical, pretty much. So, right, yeah, it probably is kind of a waste of your of your talents then. Okay, I feel so, like they're motivated to have us in the race, so I don't think they're going to try to attack us and disqualify themselves too. I think everybody's here to do this ritualistic race, so I don't really think we need to do much more investigation. I think that I don't know. Maybe we should. Maybe we shouldn't. I don't. Know. It's Maybe really we should do the smart thing for once and actually keep to ourselves, unwind, and get okay. some rest. Okay. Not make any animosity with anybody. And, and Richard, Maybe you we should, should bring... cut our losses right now and just go back to our room. And Richard, you should bring your glasses with you tomorrow for the race. Um, that would be interesting. And uh... oh, do you have a headband to keep those on your face while during the race? I'm a. I can attune to them, and they're just stuck to your face. Oh, you want to make it like sports glasses? I mean, they just clip on like me, like uh, Morpheus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go make you a band. I have some from that mentors. Yeah, well, I, I thought they. I thought they original pretty much one. were just on him all the time, but he can just activate him when he. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. Like that. Well, yeah. on the original uh, AI art that I submitted for the inspiration for my character, he kind of had him like molded into his skin, like they were like. Oh yeah, right. Like, like an body modification. Of his, yeah. yeah, I think oh, that cool. I think that that's was rad. because of, yeah. because AI was uh, was screwing up the. Oh, picture. for sure. But I thought it looked yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's how they fit. Nice. Oh. Uh, so you're they, a freak just like us. Yeah. So I guess we'll relax. We'll get some rest. Okay. Tomorrow we'll have breakfast at the inn, and we'll see if we can find out any of the other um, contestants. I guess before we start the race, and then we. will all cram into the bus. Okay. All right. So you, after uh, after a while of just hanging around and talking, uh, you guys just all go to sleep, and you can click the long rest button if you need to. Probably have done that already, and so you probably don't really. It's probably not going to make any changes, but long rest. Yeah. Well, it might reset your spells if you had spells used. So yeah. I have heroic inspiration. When that? What's that? Should there be a description on it? Uh, it just. It's a thing that I have on under my hit points now, and I'm like, huh, it's never said that before. Oh, no, that's always been there. It's never said heroic inspiration. It's only just said inspiration. Well, yeah, it used to just say inspiration, yeah. and now it says heroic inspiration. I see that too. Oh, okay. Different. Yeah. So if there's huh. something filling in that box, that means that you did something cool that earned you inspiration, so if you roll badly, you can re-roll it sometime. Looks like it was a new uh, rule that came up in June 25th of this year. Yeah, well, it's just, just a lot of it's rules. It's the same thing. It's always been there. They just changed. They just added the word heroic to it. The new edition just came out. Um, it says uh, here that the new heroic inspiration, uh, you will no longer roll with advantage. You won't roll two 20-sided dice and choose the higher roll. Heroic inspiration is a re-roll. You roll that d20, see the result, decide you want a higher roll, and then re-roll that d20, which is kind of what we were doing before. I did. I don't think we rolled two 20 dice. We well, rolled we're, one. We're not switching. Another. We look at the game, and so we just roll again until we. We're not switching to the new edition anyway. We're we're in the middle of this campaign. We're not going to change right. all the rules. Right. All right. So what do we do now? We did the long. All right. So it's it's early morning. Do you, before the race starts, do you guys want to take a break? This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. 
Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art. But Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale, and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C., representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over his Pinterest page and commissioning a painting of your own. For commissions, Don requires no money down, and there will be no obligation on your part. You can also head over to the Etsy shop to buy one of his books, like A Chimney Sweep's Tale, Celebrate Imagination, or The Imaginaries. Follow the link in the show notes or click on the side banner and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. On his Facebook page, check out The Sun Watchers and The Descendants. Also, take a look at his videos on our website of The Bugs Brothers, uh, an original Clive Barker painting, and the intro to the 35th anniversary screening of Hellraiser. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemic, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. A world of chaos. It's called Death Row now, way. Humanity needs a hero. How do you know Rue isn't just f***ing with us again? Because he is attuned to it. But instead, we got this f***. Oh, 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 okay, okay. We are absolutely <laughs> Do it, do it. Ah! Ah, what is this thing? Well, he has a blade. But that's mine! These weapons are the only thing that can make them bleed. I want him dead. Cool. Then let's go kill this. You saved the world. Yeah. Whatever. Sure. Death World, where everyone can hear you scream. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights. Visit Denali National Park. Sheena Hot Springs or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations, come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the BarkerCast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.tpublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. The BarkerCast interviews Occupy Midian. Previously, this book was only available on Kickstarter pre-order. But now you can get it on Amazon.com. Over 400 pages of interviews documenting our time at the start of the podcast and the Occupy Midian movement that successfully lobbied for an extended version of Clive Barker's Nightbreed when the movie studios and distributors were against it. Chock full of interviews with cast and crew, there are some great stories. Edited and assembled by Ryan Danhauser and Giselle Tung, the people behind the long-running Clive Barker podcast. Tell the world you're a Clive Barker fan and support this monumental effort from the fan community by buying this book on Amazon Hardcover, Kindle, or Apple Books. Thanks for listening. Reading. Thanks for reading. Of course, the best way to support this podcast is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash BarkerCast589. Our subscribers will get exclusive access to content not available anywhere else, like our Collector's Corner video series, Rare Barker videos, and early behind-the-scenes stuff. 
Plus, backers in the $10 tier will also be able to choose an episode topic. And we might mail you something once in a while, depending on your location. Our supporters also get access to the exclusive channel in our Discord server. We'll be forever grateful if you consider helping us out and subscribing to our Patreon. So what's new on Patreon? Special thanks to our Patreon backers, David Anderson, Eric Vandeholt, Daniel Elvin, Amanda Stewart, and our returning sponsor, Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Just in while I was editing this, Don Bertram sent me over a video that he made of his memory of Clive Barker's A to Z of horror, in particular, uh, his memories of the artwork and, and uh, that went along with that. And that was in response to our interview with Stephen Jones on episode 464. So if you're a Patreon backer, go check this one out. It just posted. It's, this is Saturday as I'm editing this. Uh, so go take a look. By the time this episode posts, you should be able to see Jose's new uh, Patreon post, A Story With No Title, A Street With No Name. And Jose's reflection on our conversation with editor and author Stephen Jones, which you shouldn't miss. There's also a blog post version of this. Everybody should check this one out. Coming soon, the Book Club of Blood, where we will visit with uh, our Patreon backers and, re and revisit each Books of Blood story from start to finish, one episode per story, where we really get to deep dive in. Uh, you guys, I'm assuming you get up uh, in time for the bus. I, you know, we don't have to. I barely it. make it. You, I'm like you, right at the last second. Do an, uh, do a time schedule check. Yeah. So, <laughs> Rob, so you're able to get on the bus. Is ready to run. Yep. You you see all the other people from the from the hotel getting on the bus with you. There's the guy who was filing his feet. He's there. It looks like he finished filing <laughs> his feet. He's got like a half inch of callus. And it's, so it's like a shoe tread uh, on the bottom of his nice. foot. <clears throat> hey, some guy won the marathon in the Fifth Dominion without shoes. So good luck yeah. for that guy. Yep. Hey, and, man, uh, it obviously and, works. So, yep. And you you see a woman uh, coming out behind him and, uh, and another guy. And then you see Butterfield. He's still wearing his suit. Apparently, he's going to run in that. Um, Paget Storm comes out, gets on the bus. A guy who seems to be that a Churduvir would recognize as being from my K. Um, and, uh, you see Willem, you know, in his, you know, goth looking outfit. Look, looks like a person. And, uh, emo spider. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like imagining Spider-Man and yeah. Spider-Man 2. And, and, <clears throat> and someone dressed uh, as if they're from the Del Deliquium Kesperate in Ezordorex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people. Yep. So you all kind of squeeze onto the bus and uh, you're... 99 and the... bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I bet it stinks on this bus. You guys think yeah. he's the mole? <laughs> It only takes about ten minutes to get up there. Um, you know, once everybody's loaded on the bus and the and they shut their doors and and drive up. Um, it's an old, old like fifties looking diesel bus. Uh, and it, yeah, it takes you up to the top, and you all kind of line yourselves up on the uh, at the starting line. I was wondering. So Quaxial Tasco st uh, stood up in front of everybody with a megaphone. And he says, contestants, contestants know, that, know your that your entry fees, fees go, directly go directly to the restoration, to the restoration of, our of our beautiful town of Beatrix. Of Beatrix. 33, 33 years ago today, today our, little our little town of Beatrix was flattened, was flattened and burned by shock, by shock troopers, troopers of the Autarch. Autarch. May, his, May spirit his spirit never know never peace. No peace. But just but look just at us look now, now, on our way, way to being, to being a bustling, bustling little town again. We have visitors from all over the Dominions, even the Fifth. Please don't forget to check out our shops and eateries and stay in the lovely Beatrix Inn. We love, we love our visitors, our visitors. and you, and know, you it know it from the spectacular, spectacular service, service you'll always, you'll always get, here. get here. And now, and without, now any without any further ado, ado on your on marks, your marks get, set, get set, run. run. And then the race started. Are there stirrups, like whatever, for your feet to like, so you can like cock yourself down and get ready to launch? No, no, it's not, it's not that, it's not really, it's not like the Olympics or anything. 
Well, I don't know what those things are called. Sorry, I know I murdered that. But it's long distance running. You don't get those. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. I'm glad someone knows. How long it was. I don't. Ralph doesn't know what's going on. So Ralph's over preparing and stretching like crazy. He takes off his okay. jacket and shirt and is only wearing his torn up pants and ready to go. All right. So is he wearing his cloak of displacement? Probably not. Who knows? Yes, oh, he we, is. We need to know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ralph. Okay. Did. Oh wait. Ralph wait. just takes off his clothes and only wears his pant, torn up pants. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. Before we before we get into this, I need to hurry up and go ahead, and I need to send Bardic Inspiration to um, to Trudevere since he's in the most danger. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm clicking one Bardic Inspiration for Chodavir. That means Chodavir gets an Inspiration die, 1d10. And you know what? Um, Anastasia's <laughs> running with Chodavir, correct? Yes. Okay. okay, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and do another for Anastasia. So they each have one. So Anastasia also gets the Inspiration die, the 1d10. Okay. Uh, question. Um... Since I'm running with Chertovir and we're trying to load him up with protection, can I go ahead and do a, a level one protection from evil and good? Or, or should uh, I? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, let's see. So he How can't long be... does it last? Wait. It just says one action, da, 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 concentration up to 10 minutes. Okay. If we're doing a 5K, that's going to be about... Well, depending on how fast we go. Like 40 minutes or... 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. Or should I hold... Do you think I should hold off? I have that as well. So I can always do one later too. Yeah, we, we can always top them off. <laughs> so yeah. so we're going to do kind of a new... I know it says 0.5 uh, meters on there or something. Or miles. But we're going to do... Uh, on the bottom of the screen, we're going to have just where people are relative to each other so it's not their progress through the race it's where people are relative to each other and that's what we're going to roll for uh and then up at the top if you get in a fight we'll be moving up to the map at the top okay. to show like where people are in relation to each other and, and this, getting in the fight and stuff this is gonna be sick yeah so think of like the those little mechanical arcade horse racing games kind of a uh -huh. thing yeah Oh yeah, dude, this is gonna be so good. So I've Hope never done like this before player. in a D and D game. I made this up, so we'll no. see how it works oh, out. Cool. But I think I, oh, I think also I've got it completely out. separate aside. Whenever you play those games, I used to work at a place that had one of those games. You're supposed to roll the bottom nonstop, and then you win. You win. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, because it's the shortest distance. Uh, so even though it's the shortest distance, you are able to get the ball back faster. Oh uh, okay. It's like playing Final Fantasy while you're running across the ground, and all of a sudden you jump into an instance, and that instance will be up there while we fight. Yeah, okay. yeah. Kind Our of progress like is down here. I gotcha. Yeah. All right. Okay, all right. so... I'm no, gonna... thank you for that description. That made sense. I think I'm just going to have to ignore that one and just focus on this. Well, if you so I'll have, have uh, everybody you. roll initiative. I got 17 15. total. Okay, so 17 for... Is that... Yeah, or I got a uh, 15. Ralph rolled a seven, but he's pumped. Seven. Ben, oh, we got man. a 24. Man. I, I got, got a, a 22. I got a critical fail. <laughs> oh. Did you oh, roll no. intelligence save instead of? I uh, yeah, I hit the wrong one. Oh, then I hit that's... then I hit the right one. I got a critical fail plus two oh, no. is three. <laughs> Since I got a critical fail, can I reroll? Uh. I rolled a one. Any? Oh, no, I think... Well, it's not really a critical fail. You still add your bonus to it. Okay. Okay, so we've got all the initiative in. Uh, and so it's, it, is Bentley is going to go first with a 24. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, well, he wasn't joking. Bentley's going to do it. He's going to try to pass up uh, number 22 on the list there. He's got to make an athletics check against one of those guys. So Bentley gets uh, ooh, 14. Okay, he didn't beat the, he didn't beat that guy. So I'm gonna move them up here, and then Bentley is right behind him. There. All right. Yeah, Bentley uh, decides to take a look at this guy, and um, he uh, looks a little shocked at what he sees. 
he's making a perception check and he got a natural 20 on that and so okay so he takes some he takes some damage uh from seeing this horrible demon creature oh like psychic damage yeah he takes four damage <laughs> that guy's ugly yeah <laughs> but you don't really know what he's seeing but it's not good u-g-l-y you ain't got no alibi you ugly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt like there was a Yo Mama joke in there, but no, no. Anastasia's response was better. <laughs> he takes 10 damage. Oof. Okay, and. Whoa. Um, <laughs> 10. At this point, he's kind of looking around and like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? But nobody's, you know, nobody's reacting so far. <laughs> Okay, he, he's not going to start a fight with it yet, though. All right, and next up is... Oh, like one of the demons from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> there are demons on Scooby-Doo? Well, in Spooky Island. Oh. We watch a lot of... We haven't watched Scooby-Doo in a long time. Sure to like hear Scooby-Doo in the ghoul school. Sure to hear you have, uh, you have Willem ahead Scooby of you. Scooby-Doo and Batman. Let's mm. see. Okay, Sorry. I see, him. I see him to my right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so make an athletics check. Athletics. If you're going to try to pass Willem. Willem got a three. Willem? Athletics check, 17 plus one, 18. Yeah, you passed him. So we'll move you guys nice, nice. up to here and Chertovir ahead of him. This is Just going to kind of get well. them out of the crowd there. Sorry, it turned off. Okay, so you passed Willem. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of chugging along. Uh, you can choose to try to see his actual form if you want to, or you, you, you know who he is, so it's up to you if you want to scrutinize him. Uh, sh sure. I mean, I Richard saw his true form, but I don't know if he told me that... It, well, he did tell me that he saw him as a snake, right? No, no, no. Spider. Spider. A spider, spider, yeah, yeah. Spider. Like Indiana Jones. So, yeah, I know who Willem is. I know I know he's the spider, so I'm good. Number 21 gets to go next. So he is going to attempt to pass by Bentley. He got a uh, ten, and Bentley got. Bentley has like a whole, a whole. He he did. He was not able to pass Bentley, so he's staying where he's at. Okay, so he's going to try to pass number thirty-one. So he rolls for his athletics. It's plus zero. He gets an eleven against this guy. Seven. He passes it. Okay. So we'll move these two up. So that I can move them. He passes that guy. And he didn't look at him, he just went around him. Okay. Is one the one in front of Ralph? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so and he's rolling against another one that's similar to himself. Okay. So that's just two straight rolls. So he passed that guy. Okay. There we go. And then Riley Smith. Do we have her on here? I forget. I thought it was Riley Masters. Masters. She was Smith until you came along and then I had to change her name. Sure Smitty. Yeah, she got married. Isn't there a Butterfield in I the Lord of Illusions? Yeah. Okay. And and in Last Illusion, this this one's more based on the one in Last Illusion. So her athletics is plus two. So she got a six, and that guy oh. seven. So she wasn't able to pass him. So she kind of stays where she's at down at the bottom under number thirteen. Uh, Musette is next. What? Hi. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I gotta do an athletics check, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And um, and you're trying to pass the guy in front of you. Okay, I got uh, 11 plus, I got 13 total. 31. 13, 13 total? 13, yeah. Okay, and this guy is plus 3. So he got, wow, I'm rolling really badly with that die. He got a 5. So you passed him. So let's move these guys all forward so we have some space. And we'll put this one one ahead there. So 
that you got around him by one space. Do you want to look at him? Uh, sure. Okay, make a perception check. Okay, perception. Oh, my perception is plus eight. Okay. Oh shoot. Uh, ten total. So yeah, that that's enough. Uh, oh. You see it, it, it uh, sort of forms into this sort of, into this big hulking hyena on, on two legs. And uh, it's carrying weapons. Oh. Um, so make a wisdom saving throw. That makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, okay. it's, wisdom it's, saving throw. yeah. 16. Okay, you shrug off any mental damage, you're okay. But yeah, you've got this thing behind you now. But it's not its turn, so it can't attack you. You can attack it if you want to, or you can just leave it. I'm going to leave it. Okay. Next is Pageant Storm. My me of are are, uh, are like dwarves, kind of, except they um, they don't feel pain. And so they get they've got they usually have a lot of scars on them. All right. So she is going to try to pass by. Uh, I'm going to say Ralph. Ralph, you need to make a uh, make an athletics check to try to beat. Uh, try to not let her get in front of you. Eleven. Okay, and she got twenty-four. So she passed you, and she's kind of in that middle space up there. Now we've got another one of these uh, human players, and I'll just have this guy roll. Oh, he got a natural twenty. He got to move up two spaces, and then it's Richard's turn. All right, let's go. Yeah, I definitely throw those glasses on and activate them. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Who are, are you going to look at the guy in front of you? Yes, I definitely check out. To, as soon as I look right up, I, I see if he's real or not. Yeah, and you don't have to roll anything for that. He is. Um, that one is 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 a kind of a big slavering. Um, Hyena on two legs, kind of similar to what what uh, what Musette saw. Okay. Are you gonna try to roll athletics against him to get in front of him? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Off. Oh. I rolled a nine. Okay, and he got eleven. So we'll put you guys out here. And you're staying behind him for right now. So, oh, <laughs> heck yeah! I just start laughing to myself, like kind of chuckling. And uh, I do not attack it. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to be a good boy right now and run run this race. But it's like nine feet tall, and it has it has blue blue face and orange fur. Ooh, I like the way that looks inside my head. Uh, yep, I'm just running behind it. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race. Okay. Uh, and next up is all of the uh, hyena-looking guys. Let's see. Okay, so this one behind Musette is going to try to pass her. You get a natural one, so he doesn't move. He kind of trips. So you can roll if you want, um, but... He's not moving, so he's not really getting up to you. Okay, and then this one is going to roll against his friend. And he passed him. And he's kind of up ahead of Bentley there. on the Or up equal to Bentley on the side. Two more. That one down here is going to roll against Bentley. So he'll be the green one. Oh, he got a natural 20. So that's 22. And Bentley got nine plus nine is 18. So he got to move up two spaces. This guy is going to try to run against that one. This guy and that guy. <laughs> yeah, so this guy, number 12 right there, is beating that one. He ends up here. And so now the orange gorilla that's behind Musette is going to try to uh, race, is tr going to try to beat you. He's going to try to get around you again, Musette. He got 12 plus 4 is 16. So uh, Musette make an athletics check to not let him get around you. Okay. 
nine. Okay, so he beats you. So he's he goes up here with a 16. Okay, and then this one is running against Bentley. And Bentley's plus nine, and Bentley will make the purple die. Oh, he got a natural one, so he did not get ahead of... Uh, he did not pull out ahead of Bentley. He's staying where he's at. Okay, so he got... Uh, he's um, going against Pageant Storm. He got 11, uh, 15. And Pageant Storm got... So, 12. So he passed her. Okay. Now we've got more human types. This one passes. And those two. Okay. This one passes him. And that one is racing against Anastasia. He got an 11, so make an athletics check, Anastasia, for this guy to get past you. 19. He did not. Yay! Yay! Okay. 9 versus 14, so he passed it. Okay. And Willem, and then Ralph will be next after Willem. He's up here. He's right in front of Musette, and he's going to try to pull away from Musette. So make an ath at Musette needs to make an athletics check. Copy that. He's Louise. Five total. Okay. He got 22. So he actually pulled two spaces ahead. Willem is actually in the lead in the race. Okay, Ralph, you're uh, up. And you're racing up against, you've got uh, somebody beside you and uh, some and two people in front and to the sides. You can try to squeeze in between them. Um, do you want to look at any of them first and try to figure out who they are, or do you want to just try to squeeze into that space? I'm just going to squeeze through it. There's no sense in knowing who these people are. Okay. Either we win the race and they attack us, or we lose the race and they attack us. Well, they attack you during the race, not not when you win. Either way, we're the bad guys in the grand scheme of things. How do you mean? We kill everything. You don't have to. Yeah, I don't understand. Anyway, I'm just going to roll. I'm going to so move. Okay, roll athletics. But you're not going to attack is what you're getting to, right? No, I'm not going to attack. Okay, we're actually being reserved for once in our lives. Okay. We've learned our lesson, maybe, possibly. I mean, not doing anything and taking the first move might end up biting us in the ass, so we'll see. Here we go! Ralph rolls! Oh, shit. Uh, you 17. Beat, you gotta beat a natural one, so you be, you can yep, you can move up there into that space. I can do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh. So, 41. Who's kind of two spaces in front of, uh, in front of Anastasia. He'll be the green die. I don't think that... Yeah, he didn't make it. We'll move them up here. To give a little more space. But they both moved. There. Oh, there he is. He's got that human in front of him. He'll be the green one. Oh, yeah. He totally passed that guy. Okay. And the last... One is that one right below Anastasia. He's going to roll against Anastasia to try to get past her. He got a natural one, so you got to beat that, Anastasia. Make an athletics check. 14. Okay. So I would say that you kind of move ahead here. Okay. And now it's your turn. Actually, it's Anastasia's turn. Okay. So just roll another athletics check too. Yeah, and okay. so you're trying to squeeze, and it's against these two people on the in front of you on the sides. I only got a four. They also got a four, so you um, you kind of stay where you're at. Okay, that's the end of round one. Thirty turns. Okay, and it's Bentley's turn again. Where is he? Oh, he's got he's got that orange gorilla in front of him. He's going to try to squeeze around him. And he sees what it is. In athletics, his is plus nine. I'll use this big one. 
Wow. 25 versus the big gorilla. No. So Bentley passed him. In two spaces because he got above a 20. That's Bentley's turn. Chertovir is next. Yes. Do I need to do an athletics check? Uh, where are you? Let me find you. I'm on the fourth lane from the top. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're... Yep, I see. Yeah, to pull away from Willem, you, you'll need to make an athletics check against him. All right, let's see what we got. Athletics check. All right. I've got yeah, 13. That's, that's a Goristro, I think, Rob. Uh, that's not a... Yeah. They have that a on 13? the map for some reason. Uh, yeah. If you click away, it'll go away. He also think... got a 13. Oh. Looks so like you're we're head to head. Neck and neck with that. Okay, we'll, antenna to we'll spider leg one. with that. I gotta push my antennas forward for like yeah. <laughs> aerodynamics. Right. He doesn't have to roll against anybody. He just we'll just see if, how far he gets. He got a natural twenty, so he gets to move up two two more spaces. He's way out in the lead now. He got away from him. Okay. And this one we do up at the top. He pulled up. Okay. And then it's Riley's turn. She's way in the back. And she's got nobody she's really up against because she's been left behind. So she just needs to make an athletics check. I think she's like plus two or something. Let's see. Yeah. So she just got a five. She didn't move. She's still, she's still in the same spot. She's kind of slow. Okay. Musette is next. Slavering hyena looking guy behind you. Yes. And the gorilla is like in front and to the right. The orange gorilla. Okay. So you're going to try to well, pull, pull away. Um, let's see. You're going to try to push in beside the, the gorilla one or just kind of just try to get away from the hyena one behind you? Yeah, I'm just going to keep running because, like we've okay. been mentioning, we're all going to be good and not. You know, start fights mm -hmm. anymore. We're not doing that. We're reformed. We're reformed. Yeah. Um, okay, so athletics. Jeez. Ah, 11 total. Okay. Jericho Squad plays by rules. We nice people. Okay, they got a six. So I think you pulled away from that guy. And now you've got the gorilla right to, to the side of you there. Oh, uh, do you want to look? You know, I don't think you see him. So, do you want to look at him and see the gorilla-looking guy? The gorilla-looking guy. Um, yeah. sure. Okay, make a perception check. Uh, perception. Okay. If, if you get above a ten, then you can see him. Uh, nineteen. Okay, yeah, you see him. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw. He's like a huge orange-looking gorilla. Uh, two. Okay. Um, five. Uh, psychic damage. Five. Copy that. Yeah. Okay, and then this one that was behind you is going to try to move ahead against Richard. So, Richard, make a uh, make an athletics check. Athletics check? Yeah, you got to beat a 12, or he's going to pull away from you. 19. Okay, he did not, he was not able to pull away from you. You kind of got in his way a little bit. And then this one is rolling against Paddle Storm, and he'll be green. So he got a 19. He was able to do it. 19 plus 2, so he gets to move two spaces. And that one is moving ahead of, trying to move ahead of Butterfield, his boss. They're, they're kind of the same. And Paget Storm is next. And she's going to roll against Butterfield, and she's plus 9. That's 26, and Butterfield was also plus 9, but she beat him. She got around him two spaces. She doesn't look at him. She's just focused on the race. And it's Richard's turn. 
So you, Richard, you oh, have my. a person in front of you, and from your glasses, he just looks like a regular person. Alrighty then. So I'm going to just start sprinting forward. Okay, make an uh, athletics okay. check. Twenty-six. Okay, so and you got what? What you got a? I, what did you roll? I got in? a twenty-six. Okay. He got a five, so you got around him. And you can see now that the the guy that's in the lead. What's he look like? Uh, it looks like a big old vulture, and in fact, its feet aren't even touching the ground. It's flying. Yeah, it's that's cheating. Bullshit. Yeah. But the rest so, of us just see him as a real person. Well, Musette would be able to see him, but she'd have to take it an action to look okay. at him. Well, I just fine. Then I yell over to Musette, "That guy in front of you, Mister." Mr. V Rock, he's flying. He's a vulture. Okay. Um, do you want to do anything on your turn? He's probably he's a he's a good like twenty feet in front of you. I can't really hit him with any of my swords that I'm rolling with right now. Okay. All <laughs> right. And it is the orange gorilla. They're called Balguras. It's their turn. So, one of them's trying to get around Richard, the one that's right behind him. So, Richard, make another athletics check, and you got to beat an eight. 23. Okay. He is mad that he can't get around you. He's You're kind of blocking his way, and so he's going to attack you. That's the orange, uh, orange yeah. ape. So let's put in the upper section here, let's put um, him and Bentley and Musette and Richard all in there he's going to bite at you uh, and that's uh, 18 to hit what's your armor class right now it's only 17 so he hits me okay and that's 13 damage and then he's going to punch you with his fist so 18, so that would hit also. And that's 1d10 plus 4, 7. And another punch. Oh, that hits also. Um, 11 damage. So he, he, he ran up behind you, and when he, he kept trying to get around, and we couldn't get around, he got mad, and he goes, ah! And then he, he uh, bit you, and then he punched you two times. Why is this guy beating on Richard? Because he's mad because he couldn't get around him. So does that mean he, his team forfeits the race? No, because now we're in the race. Yeah. Oh, wait. But they threw the first punch. Yeah, and before. everybody can see guys. him. And we since he's attacked, since he's attacked, now every now everybody can see him for what he is. Oh, a bitch. That's useful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard, I think you need to attack back because I think if I do something, then I know we're running and talking at the same time, like jackasses. But I think if I throw a first punch, that might be bad for our team. So you need to defend yourself now. <laughs> I'm like half health right now. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me catch up. Let me catch up. Yeah. And now it's the other or the other gorilla's turn. I mean, Jesus, we haven't even gotten halfway yet. We haven't even gotten like a tenth of the way yet. Well, like I said before, we're not. This is just showing your relative position to each other. It's oh, not your progress in the race. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The other one. Where is? Oh, there it is. It's going to try to catch up to Bentley. He got didn't he didn't move anywhere and Bentley uh, Bentley staying well ahead of him. Okay, and next is Butterfield's turn. He's gonna try to get around this uh, knoll. He succeeded. Okay, and another person didn't go anywhere. And the big knoll. There we go. He's trying to pull away from that guy. He did not succeed. Okay. And two more regular people. This one pulled ahead. 
and Willem. I thought Willem was in front of the race, but he's not. Where is Willem? He's behind Chertobir. So he's going to make an athletics check to get around Chertobir. Okay. He got... You should be able to use an attack of opportunity if that happens. Well, if you get if you initiate combat, then that's when that can happen. Okay. So if you want to, but yeah, so he, he got a 14 or 15. Chertovir, what'd you get? All right. My athletics roll is 17 plus one equals 18. Okay. Uh, so he, Willem was not able to get around you. We'll move that's, you both. You got pretty good. So we'll move both of you one space. That's right. Next time I'll bring a can of raid for that spider. <laughs> <laughs> and now all of a sudden everybody hates Willem. I like Willem. Okay, now all of a sudden, Chertovir hates Willem. Well, you know, I mean, he represents a stupid thing that I did. <laughs> okay. That has come back to bite me in the ass throughout this entire quest. Chertovir needs to just go to therapy. I know. <laughs> I'll do anything except go to therapy. I'll do a 4K race or a 5K race. All right, so uh, Ralph is next. You've got uh, perfect. Regular, you got regular people in front of you, and he got the one in front of you got an eight. So roll, make an athletics check against an eight. I got a nine. All right, you beat. Did him. you make your athletics check? I, well, I no, just okay. rolled after I rolled. Yeah. No, I got you. So I rolled a nine. And the only place to go really is right to the, his side of him in front uh, behind Pageant Storm. Did he die? He, no, he didn't die. Oh. He's just a regular person. Oh. Okay. Do you a want regular to, person to be gonna, my friend? Are you attacking him? No, I'm going to okay. invoke my friendliness upon him. Okay. I'm going to charm him with my charming abilities. Okay. Um, yeah, make a persuasion check. What's your persuasion modifier? Well, he got a whoa, a nineteen. I rolled a nineteen. But hold he on, got, he's got a twelve. So yeah, you convinced him that he should yes. just let you, you know, politely let you buy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be like, hey, buddy, do you just want to <laughs> run next to me the whole time? <laughs> yeah. We'll grab a, uh, we'll grab some whiskey awesome. bros afterward. Okay, so this guy is gonna roll against the null thing. All right, ignore my question, bro. <laughs> And he beat him. <laughs> and this one is trying to pull ahead of the human. He moved one forward. Okay. And Anastasia. Okay, athletics check. Yeah, where are you? No, oh, okay, I only got a five. Uh, yeah, see, that's just against a regular human. I you only got a, got a five. five. You got a ten. Yeah. So you kind of stay where you're at. Yeah. And that guy is moving here. Probably best if I hang back anyway, because I can see exactly who needs to be healed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to get and, too far ahead. <laughs> Have so everybody dying behind of, me. <laughs> of round two. And it's Bentley's turn, and he just saw this gorilla beating the crap out of Richard. And so he's gonna try to he's gonna try to do something to help. So first he's gonna make an athletics check to catch up. Uh, six plus nine, he's able to do it. He's not trying to get around him; he's just getting behind him. Confusing. Okay, right there. Bentley is gonna make two attacks against him. He's going to do uh, one with his short sword of life stealing. So he does 10 damage to it with his first attack. And he's going to attack again with his plus one long sword. That hits uh, 12 more damage. And he's going to get one more attack because that was his two handed attack. And now he gets one more attack with his regular weapon, his long sword. I think that's a miss. So that's the end of his turn. Chertovir is next. But you've got Willem right behind you. So do you want to make an athletics check to try to pull away from Willem? Yeah, I mean, 
we can either beat him or beat him in the race. So <laughs> I'm going to try to do I, I that. I don't know what you mean. Okay. I mean, we can either start fighting them or we can try no. to win the race. I mean, if we win the mm -hmm. race, there's no way they can. But I'm not supposed to win the race because Gaustus and me have a history. So I was going to stay behind, but. All what right, do you mean you're, you're not supposed to race, win the race? Well, we were talking about it in Musette and Richard, and they told me, I don't think you should win the race because oh, you're in, okay. in a pact with Gaustus or whatever. So it, it would mean like he won. So but that uh, was before the race started. I think at this point it's just, you know, survive. So you do what's best for you, yeah. which will be what's best for all of us. All right. So let's so, go ahead and do an athletics check. Oh, my God. Four plus one equals five. Yeah, and Willem got a Willem got a higher than that. So you guys are kind of staying in your relative positions there. Okay. Are you gonna do anything else, or is that it for your turn? So right now, who's fighting? That that group below you. Um, yeah, Anastasia, Bentley, the Bulgura, and Richard. If they oh, wanted. I see. I think I think three people are okay for that guy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stay where I am. Okay. Now it's the the vulture guy in the front. It's his turn. So he's gonna make an athletics check to try to pull ahead even further. He got a six, so he uh, he kind of slowed down a little bit. He didn't move ahead anymore. Okay. And now uh, two more humans. And that one is pulling. That one next to Ralph is pulling ahead. Or no, wait, he said he was going to stick by Ralph, so the other one is pulling ahead. Because he got charmed. Okay, there. And now it's Riley. And she's got nobody that she's racing against, so she just needs to move ahead. She got a 17, so she'll move up one. She's not much help from where she's at. Musette, it's your turn, and you, saw, you just saw the... Uh, that uh, big orange gorilla guy just start bashing on Richard. Yeah, I saw some stuff go down. So I'm gonna throw some vicious mockery towards the gorilla man dude guy. Okay. Well, is that a is that an intelligence save? It is. Uh, or wisdom. Says, um, okay, for me it's at will uh, wisdom. Okay. For you it's wisdom fifteen. Okay, thank you. Oh, he got a nineteen. Oh. So, what do you say about him to mock him? Hey, you dumb jerk. I'm not good at mocking. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm actually yeah, really, really nice, failed. and I'm not good at mocking anybody. But it stabs oh, hard every time. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to do anything else, like bonus action or movement? Um, I mean, I would like to keep trying to run. Okay, so make an athletics check against him. Okay. He got a 17. Ooh, no, I got a 7. Okay. Did not do well, sorry. So you weren't able to pass him, right? Or did you make your athletics check already? Yes, and I failed. Okay. Next, I got so a 7 and he had a 17. So then it's Pageant Storm's turn. And she is... So she's going to try to get a ahead of Butterfield. So she's going to roll against him. That's 12. And he got way higher. So she wasn't able to get around him. Got an 8. So he's going to kind of try to move up beside uh, Anastasia. So make an athletics check, Anastasia. 13. Okay, he didn't make it then. He's still, still in the back. And it's Richard's turn. And this big old gorilla just started pummeling you in the back. So what do you want to do? I want to pummel him in the back back. Okay. So you're going to turn around and start hitting him with your sword? Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. Roll to hit. 23. That definitely hits. Yep. So you can roll your damage. Which sword is this that you're using? Cassius Pryor's old sword. Oh, okay. 10. Okay. And uh, swing again with a 25. That definitely hits. 14 damage. Wow. Okay. You guys are whittling him down. He's looking kind of beat up and he's regretting his... Uh, it looks like he's kind of regretting his starting this fight. 
yes, regret your life choices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So, w- what do you want to do for? Do you want to? Do you want to try to stay ahead of him now, or do you? Oh, want for to... sure. Yeah, I want to keep running. Okay, make an athletics check. He got. Uh... Oh, you beat him. Yeah, he got uh, eleven. Twenty-two. Yeah. So you can, uh, with over a twenty, you can move ahead two spaces if you want. Yeah, let's do so. Okay. So we'll do that here, and then we'll do that also down below in the uh, two spaces. So you're right next to the vulture-looking thing. And up here, actually, how many spaces? I mean, in in real movement, how many spaces do you want to go? Because you can go your full movement if you want. Oh, yeah, let's just uh, go my full movement. So is that 30? Uh, My walking speed is 30, yes. Okay, so so that's 10, so you can do 15, 20, 25, 30 there. All right. And yeah, you see this this vulture thing, you've caught up to it now, and it's kind of looking back like, "Uh uh-oh, someone's catching up to me. I just wink at it. (laughs) All right, so this one is going to try to get in position next to Bentley. Yeah, uh, it does. It succeeds in getting up there. And it's going to get in on the fight and abide in two fist attacks against Bentley. 14, that's a miss. 15 is also a miss. 3 plus whatever, that's a 10. Yeah, he missed three times. Oh, he's there. He blends in with the background. Okay, we'll have to not forget that he's there. This next Noel behind him got 19 plus 4, so he actually got to move up two spaces. He's going to get on the other side of Bentley and start attacking him. So, Rob, we need another Noel that's below Bentley on the map. He's going to attack. That's plus 7. Three times. All of those miss except for the last punch. So seven damage to Bentley. And of course, everybody can see him, see these two gnolls now. Okay, this one is going to try to get around Butterfield, which is probably not a good idea. But he did it. He got a natural 20. He got to move two spaces. So he moves right behind Bentley. And he's going to attack him again. Three more attacks. Whoa, one of them's a critical hit. And all the other two miss. So one of his punches. Seven, 14 more damage. Bentley's is uh, in trouble. <laughs> sort of. Oh, the gorilla's that speed up. It's his turn. So Richard kind of pulled away from him. So... I guess he would have gotten an attack of opportunity. Let's try that. 21 to hit. So that would be a a punch. So I think that hits. Yep. So you take seven damage as you pull the wave. So that was his his reaction, you know, to your turn. And now it's his turn. I think Bentley is the one that beat him up the most. So he's going to go after Bentley. Yeah, yeah, because... Musette called him names, but Bentley slashed him with his sword, so he's going to go after Bentley. So he's going to bite and punch and punch. Yep, I think all three of those hit. So five, ten, and ten plus twenty-nine damage to Bentley. (laughs) With the gorilla onslaught. Yikes. And Butterfield. He's racing against Pat, trying to get ahead of Pageant Storm. Pageant Storm is plus nine, so that's 13. And he got a 16 plus nine, so 25. So he got to move up two spaces. He's moving up here, and he's kind of in the fight there with, but he's not going to attack yet. He wants to see what's going on. He says, oh dear, oh dear. (laughs) The other gorilla guy, he got up here. Okay, he's catching up. 
And we've got one of the one of the human looking guys moved ahead. Okay, and that one is getting ahead of this one. So the Noel Fang is getting ahead of the other one. Who looks like a person for right now. This one's going ahead. Willem. He's got to get around Chertovir again, so make an athletics check. All right, let me go ahead and do that. I have got a 12. Okay, he got a 16. So he oh, got man. ahead of you. Huh. But he's not attacking or anything. As far as okay. he knows, you're still on his side. Hmm. Everybody was calling us slowpokes, but me and Richard are kind of like getting him up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got big legs, I guess, being like a gigantic <laughs> yeah. erythemac with six and a half feet tall. Yep. And it's Ralph's turn. I'm running forward. Cool. Okay, against Pageant Storm. So you're going to try to get around her? Sure. And we're okay. friends already. And I'll be just extra charming and be yeah. like, hey, friend, I'm moving forward. She Come got a 20. We'll she, got a, beers. she got a 26. Fuck that. I got a 13. Okay. So <laughs> we'll move you both. You you both did well enough to move ahead one space, though. Cool. Okay. He got ahead of that one. And he's so he's coming up behind Chirdomir. Natural 20. He moved up two spaces. Right there. And it's Anastasia's turn. Hey. Okay, you're rolling against regular, uh, the regular human racers. Or 18. Human and, and equivalent. 18. Oh, that's pretty good. They got a 14. Woohoo! So you can move up in between there. All right. Round four is Bentley's turn, and he is beat up and surrounded. He says, hey, guys, I think I might need some help. And he's going to start attacking this gorilla guy again. I'm going as fast as I can. <laughs> He's doing his short sword of life stealing. 24 to hit. And 1 plus 6, 7 damage. Okay, and he's going to attack two times with his long sword. I'll just roll both. 9 damage that time. And he's going to use his... Uh, he's going to use his action surge so that he gets a whole other round of attacks. Because he's scared he's going to die if he doesn't finish this guy off. Short Sword of Life Stealing hits. 12 damage for that one. And it is dead. <laughs> and then he's going to turn to one of the, uh, the the knoll that's beneath him, that's down below, and start attacking it. 19. They both hit. Plus 10 is 22. That He killed one. He's going to make an athletics check to get ahead of that. He was 19. He's not able to get ahead of it. Okay. That was a big turn for Ben. Now it's Chertovir's turn. And you got Willem in front of you. And you're, <sighs> it looks like you're about fourth place in the race. Fourth place, huh? One, yeah. two, three, four, yeah. Well, I'm not going to attack Willem because my reasoning is I, I, I want to I wanna either win this fair and square with them or I don't want to I don't want to fight him because otherwise Gaussus will start attacking us. And uh, I guess I'll just try to do the athletics check and see if I can pass him. Okay. He got and uh, an eight. I got a 20. Oh, is that a natural 20 or just a total 20? A 19 plus one. Okay. That's yeah, a you can You can move up two spaces. So you can move um, past him and then one more. So Did you're you have... actually tied for first right now. All right. And that vulture, um, do you, I don't know if you can see the vulture thing. I forgot. I don't Is think that so. the thing immediately underneath me? Yeah. Oh. I guess do I'll just want... see it as a person. I don't think he saw it. Yeah. Do you want to look at it? Yeah. I mean, I've been behind Richard and the vulture, yeah. so they've been in my field of vision, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I can but take a look take, at yeah, my... But if you, if you actually make an attempt to okay. scrutinize it you could see through the illusion Sh should i do an investigation check no it would be uh, it would be um, arcana perce perception perception okay 
Is there a perception check while I look at him? You you could do Arcana if you want instead. Okay. So perception, I get 11 plus 6, which gave me a 17. Th- that was enough anyway. Yeah. And then make a wisdom check to, to, to see if you take psychic damage when you see the thing. A what uh, saving throw? Wisdom. Const- wisdom. Saving throw. I think I did. 16 yeah. plus 6 oh, equals yeah. 22. You see, you've seen all kinds of stuff being in Jericho, and this doesn't phase you. Okay, so I'm like, oh, that guy is actually flying, and he's kind of a vulture looking thing. Yeah. Do you want... I mean, you're close enough with distance spells, you could attack it if you want to. Can I sense anything from him to see if he's uh, one of Butterfield's agents, or or do I have to take that interpretation myself? Yeah, I mean, you, there... It's it's definitely a demon. Right. And I think Gauss's uh, representation is only Willem. So that's the one guy who said he had. So I guess I'm safe to attack him. Um, can I still attack him in my turn? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All you've done is move so far and look at him. All right. Since I'm tied so for I would first... say that would be your movement and your bonus action. All right. This is where my interesting little... Spells can come into. Uh... All right, I want this guy to either uh, stay behind or lose. So I think I'm going to use my Edvard's black tentacles. I think that's uh, in a ten foot space around you, right? In a twenty foot square on ground that I can see within range. So let me see. Uh, that's five, five, ten. He's he's within like ten feet of me, right? Okay, so we're going to put you up here. But let me think of something, because I don't want to attack anybody else, and that would mean that that area of 20 square feet, those tentacles turn the ground in the area to difficult terrain. When a creature enters the affected area or starts its turn there, the creature must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 3d6 bludgeoning damage. Also, you would hit Richard. Yeah, so that's probably not the best idea. Let me see. This is all going in my head. Let's see. What else do I have? I had something else that could grab someone with a giant dirt hand. Let me see if I can find that. Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. So this one this one would also affect. Okay. So I, I, I don't know if I could concentrate while I'm still running. Yeah, you uh, can. As long as you don't cast any more concentration spells or if you get hurt, you have a chance of losing concentration. Excellent. So in that case, I'm going to go with Maximilian's Earth and Grasp at okay. a... Yep, I'm going to cast that. And it says here that within a five-foot square unoccupied space on the ground that I can see within range, a medium hand made from compacted earth soil rises there and reaches for one creature that I can see within five feet of it. So I'm going to try to cast that on that square right in front of the vulture. The hand will come up and try to grab it. Okay. Um, And then it says... What's the save for that? Strength 15. Okay, he got 11, so he failed. You grabbed him. Okay. And now it says here the target must make a strength savings throw. On a failed save, the target takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage and is restrained for the spell's duration, which is a minute. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. 2d6, right? Mm-hmm. Seven. Seven. Okay. And he's restrained. Ah, I got him. The Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. Yeah. That's exciting. And so it's kind of going, ah. and you yeah. can see wings coming out of the fingers on the on the hand. Awesome, awesome! I wanted to hold them down so we can take over. All right, yeah. So Rob, can you put the? I don't know if there's a hand that you could put. He already on did something, right? I see a little red icon on that uh, guy. Oh, me, I yeah. Yeah, there's already red hand on that icon. Yeah, I meant on the on the battle map up up above. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but he so now he's stuck there. So yeah. does it say that he can make a new save to get out of it every turn, or is he's just stuck now until it, uh, it's until your concentration ends? So it says here uh, uh, on a success, the target escapes, no longer restrained by the hand. Okay, so that's every turn he can make a new check to get out of it, and you can also yeah. squeeze him more. Squeeze him. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the end of Chernobyl's turn. And now oh. it is its turn already, and uh, he's going to try to get out. Oh, 15 strength, you said? 
and he got uh, 18. Oh. So he got out of it, but that's his whole turn. Okay. There. And it's Riley's turn. And she's way in the back. She's like plus four. She got a 19, so she got to move up one. Okay. And Musette. So in the combat, Musette, you have... Um, you saw Bentley kill that gorilla guy and one of the gnolls that was uh, beneath him. But there's still one more knoll there uh, behind you, sort of re battling with Bentley. Okay, so I'm going to cast um, at fifth level aid to... Wait. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, I'm close enough to Bentley still. Yeah. The range is 30 feet. I mean, can I hit Richard? I don't think he's... I think Richard's too far. You could hit... You could get Churd over here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, Oh, sorry, 30. I can't see. Oh, okay, yeah. You if could I hit... Oh, you could hit too. Yeah, you could hit Churd over here and Richard. Oh, okay, and Bentley. I mean, like, my main yeah. focus is Bentley, but if I can hit anyone else, then I'll take yeah. it. Um, okay, thank you. Each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increase five for the duration. Okay, but I want to... I'm casting it at level five. Um, when you cast a spell using a spell slot at third or higher, target's hit points increase by an additional five above second. Oh. So, if I'm doing it at fifth... Then it sounds like they would get ten uh, temporary hit 20. points. Twenty. Twenty? It says to Oops. Bentley and Chor, Devere, and Richard. So that helped Bentley a ton because he was at 10 hit points out of 70. Thank you. And now for movement. Yeah, I would like to just keep running. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, once again, athletics, right? Yeah, you're running. You're, it's athletics against that knoll that's in front of you. Not great. Um, 11 total. Okay. Whoa, you got a natural one, so that's three. So you you still pulled ahead one space. Oops. I will take it. Okay. So now it's the Knoll's turns. We'll start with the one that's above Bentley. It's going to attack him. Yeah, and this Knoll hit, just hit uh, Bentley three times, so I think you might have saved his life. So first he's going to bite. So that's six. And then he stabs him with a spear. Ten is 23 damage to Bentley. Yeah, that did save his life because he had 10 hit points when, when he started. That's And then the Noel's going to try to make an athletics check against Bentley to get, her, to get ahead of him. Bentley's 24 and natural one for that guy. So he did not. So Bentley's going to go up one to on top of the dead guy. Okay, this one is going to move up to Bentley and attack him also. Man, it's just bad luck they're all right there. So two of them hit. Three is uh, nine damage to Bentley. From Bite and Spear. This one's going to try to get ahead of the, of the gorilla one. He does not. Butterfield, where is he? He's going to try to run up behind uh, Musette. Yeah, nope, he's staying where he's at. And the other gorilla guy, the one that's still alive, is running against another knoll down there. Wow. He didn't go anywhere. And this is a person. Got a 19. He's going to move up two spaces and get in front of that guy. So he, he managed. There. And he's come up behind Willem. Yeah, he's not going to attack him just yet. Willem, 11 against the 19. He was not able to get away from the knoll behind him. And it's Ralph's turn. Ralph, what are you going to do? You've got Pageant Storm in front of you. Uh, keeping my charm going because yeah. I'm a friendly guy. Everyone likes the crocodile man. But, you know, whoever's by me could, you know, help a brother out. Okay, and this guy pulls ahead. And it's Anastasia's turn. Okay, let's see if we can get moving here. 
Natural 20. All right, you can move up ahead. I'm trying to get up there so I can help Bentley. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm in a spot that I can actually do anything just yet. Not quite, but you're getting closer. Okay. Um, let's see, 42 is a bad guy, right? I'm uh, squinting him. Well, you, you have to look at him to know. Do you want to oh. do do check it out? Yeah, okay. and that is... Make a perception check. Perception check. 16. Yeah, so what you see, instead of a person standing on two legs, now you see what looks like uh, sort of like an end table with its all mouth and it's got four legs under it. Oh, man. Yeah, so make a wisdom saving throw. 21. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. That doesn't that that horrible thing doesn't phase you at all. Okay. Do you want to attack it? We need to get these things cleared out, so let's see what we can do here. How about I'm gonna save my magic and go. Um. All right. How about I use my automatic? Well. I don't know if an automatic pistol will do anything against an end table. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it might. Maybe I can blow its leg off. I'm going to do, use my automatic pistol. Okay. Okay, so... Roll to hit. 21. Okay, yeah, that definitely hits. Roll your damage. Nine. Okay. You shot it. Okay. And it kind of howls. Arr! And... Let's see. I don't. And it it snarls, and it looks uh, it looks back towards you. How about I, uh, as a bonus action, I cast spiritual weapon, second level. Okay. Uh, where are you gonna put it? Well. Um. Well, right next to that, the thing I just shot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, roll to hit for your spiritual weapon. Seventeen. That hits. All right damage 12 okay and that would be my turn it is hurt pretty badly actually good he's probably from Ikea <laughs> it actually just looks like a mouth with legs but it's kind of shape is like you know at an end table so now it's Bentley's turn again he's got two knolls behind him so he's going to attack one of them. So that one is dead. Yeah, the one immediately behind him is dead. And he's going to uh, try to move. So first that one gets an attack opportunity. That's a hit. Oh, 10 damage to Bentley. No, oh, he's hurt pretty bad again. Everybody's picking on Bentley. Okay. Now he's going to try to do his movement. Athletics check. Yeah, he, he managed to pull ahead. So, for here, we'll move him 15 feet up. 5, 10, 15. Right behind Richard. And on the map... Yeah, on the map, he'll be right behind Richard also. That's his turn. He made it. And... He sees all these dead gnolls around him, and I think he's going to attack Muzat. So, does a 14 hit? No. Okay. My armor class is 17. Okay, and another miss. And that one is 18 plus 4, so that hits. With his spear. You take 3 damage from his spear. So I'll be that. It's Chertovir's turn, I think. Yeah. All right. Okay, so am I the first in the race right now? Uh, yeah, you're tied with the with the creature, the the vulture-looking one, the Vrock. And I it, you it was... you kind of grabbed it with that earthen grasp, and it got out, but that was enough to slow it to make it lose one turn. Okay. You can just roll an athletics check to see if you go one or two spaces and you're not rolling against anybody. All right, let's do that. Let's see what happens. Oh, my God. I got eight. Yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're sort of neck and neck still with that creature. 
Okay, okay. How far into the race are we? Uh, it's you've been running about probably ten minutes. Okay. Now, so you're a quarter of the way. Okay, is that it for your turn? Uh, let's see. I could try attacking that guy again. Um, okay. Let me send some magic missiles his way, I guess. Okay, you just roll the damage on him. Uh, casting third level magic missile. You guys are getting beaten in a race by a wizard. I'm doing this at a third level, so it's three darts. So I got the first one, five damage. Uh, the second one, five damage. The third one, three damage. So 13 damage. Okay. I'm like, pa, pa, pa. Just yeah. give him like three missiles to the face. Okay. And it is Feels going like to uh, try to get... It's nobody better... Like Nobody better come talk to us after the race saying, oh, you cheated. <laughs> I'm just it's going to roll again. It's going to do an athletics check against Richard to kind of move away from Richard and up towards Jerdoby. Nine plus three is uh, 11. So Jerdoby will make a roll, an athletics check. Athletics check again? Yeah. Okay. All right. Athletics check. I've got Jesus. One plus one equals two. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. I guess it I goes tripped. up in your face. Oh, no. Right here. Oh, man. And it's a trip. It's good. You've attacked. You've attacked it twice now, so it's pretty mad. <laughs> yeah. OK, so first he's going to bite you with his beak, which is uh, 12 to hit. I think that's a miss, probably. Well, I've got a 15 armor clasp. And then the talons was 16. I have a 15 armor class, and I did yeah. cast mage armor uh, at the beginning of the race. So you take 20 damage from his uh, talons. That goes my 10 points. Yeah, and, and now a 15-foot radius of spores emanates around it. And um, you're in the area, so make a constitution saving throw. You farted on my face? Son of a gun. No, spores are shooting out of his body. All right, so... I've got 18 plus two. That's yeah. a 20 for my roll. Yeah. So you passed. You don't take any damage. I held my breath. <gasps> mm -hmm. When I saw the spores, I'm like, yeah. So, Th yeah. Thanks for the hit uh, points, Musette. Yeah. And that's the end of its turn. So we'll, we'll stop here. So we're on uh, round five at turn three, and I'll just take a screenshot of that. Oh, sorry yeah, yeah. to tell you about a, a D. I was playing a D and D game yesterday where I was a player and I, I was a monk. And there was this uh, princess, and I was sure that she was really a green dragon that was that was tricking us. Uh -huh. And so she came over and said, "Hey, I serve the green dragon. I'm a princess, and you know, and and the you know green dragon is 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 our lord, and you should you should worship the green dragon and stuff like that." And I was sure that this this princess was actually the green dragon in disguise. So my monk punched her in the back, and it turns out she really was the princess, and he killed her in one one punch. Wow. Oof. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to check that uh, trailer for For the Love of Grindhouse. And, oh, that's uh, the full thing. It's out now. It's out now. Yeah. But we tried really hard, and I think we did a good job. Like earlier, yeah. it Richard, was awesome. Oh, there he is. Richard had mentioned that I think that this was a really, really good, like a flowing story, and I agree. Yeah. A lot of fun today, guys. It yeah. was fun. Yeah, I know. No, I, got, I got wrapped up death. in it, and I, I didn't realize the time until Jose brought it up. Yeah. Right. No, it's because it's been flowing so well. So thank yeah. you for that. Well, thank you, guys. That was fun. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The BarkerCast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. 
Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff. Pick an episode topic and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Leave a message for us using the SpeakPipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.